school and collegiate football and volleyball matchups. And tonight, it's the high school football Central Coast Section Division II South Championship game pitting the undefeated North Monterey County Condors against the undefeated Palma Chieftains. The game of the week is sponsored by Straw Hat Pizza at Highway 1 and 41st Avenue, the crossroads of our community. Ocean Chevrolet on Pacific Avenue, home of the heartbeat of America. Cash and Carry on River Street, your one-stop party store. And by A&W Family Restaurants in Felton and Santa Cruz. Stop by for your frosty mug. We'll be back with tonight's contest right after these messages. Half has got 12. Blanco put it down. Bronco let it fly. It's got enough length. My goodness, it's good. So Cal has won this football game. It is impossible to turn back the hands of time, but if we could, it would be special moments like this we would relive time and time again. with a plaque or trophy from Awards and Engraving Unlimited of Capitola, keeping the memory alive. It's the Central Coast Section South Division II Championship football game between the North Monterey County Condors and the Palma Chieftains. I'm Rusty Reed along with Frank Lynch. And Frank, we've been up here in the booth for about 15 minutes now, and the, the entire atmosphere is really cooking around here. It's electric, Rusty. I tell you, I have been around high school football for years and years, and only as a coach have I had this kind of feeling where the butterflies are really churning. These guys are ready to play. The fans are at least 3,000. they got probably another 800 sitting outstanding. They can't even get in the game yet. This is going to be one heck of a football game. I haven't seen this much excitement for a high school football game maybe in 10 years. And deservedly so, you've got two undefeated football teams out on this field, the Palm and North Monterey County. North Monterey County has won the CCS title the last two years, I think it's going to take a Herculean effort to get it out of their grasp. Well, if there's any team that can do it, and any team that's as well matched, and I really think this is a game of matchups, and we've talked a little bit about this, but with the great individual talents that uh, Palma has, Clooney and, uh, and and their quarterback operating in, in Gildersleeve, I, I think they match up very well with North Monterey. I, I'm looking for a great football contest. And it's about to get underway as Palma's getting set to kick off to start our 12-minute quarter here in the high school game. Kicking off to North Monterey County deep, Gavino Calderon is standing on his own seven yard line. Gavino the fly man in this North Monterey County offense. An offense, a game where we'll see two fly offenses going up against each other. The only difference between the fly for, for North Monterey versus Palm is that they really highlight the quarterback. Obviously, um, with the great success they've had throwing the football, they're going to come out, and, and Todd Whitehurst has been the key to this offense. He's going to make things happen. That's the big difference. Todd Whitehurst, the quarterback who has led the Condors during his three-year reign as quarterback to a 29-2-1 record. Todd Whitehurst, so we expect a lot out of him. Here we go with the kickoff. It's a CCS championship game underway. Gavino Calderon tries to track down the ball. It goes into the end zone, so we'll have a touchback, and North Monterey County will start on their own 20-yard line. Well, that's a good way to start for Palma. You know, I, I'm really curious. I, I think Palma declined, and if they won the to toss of the coin and decided to play defense right off the bat. That always scares me, you know, if I was playing against North Monterey, because they can move up and down the field like no one's business. I mean, every week it's 300, 400 yards in offense. Let me set that offense. You've got a split end. Kuma Hatton, a big 6'4", 205 target, splitting way out toward the bottom of your screen. We've got our flyman Gavino Calderon. Tide Whitehurst is the quarterback. And Todd will drop back. He's looking for Kuma Hatton, who goes deep. He's going to throw. Kuma is way deep. Maestri is covering him on defense, and it'll drop to the ground. So a good play by Maestri, and 
I think uh, Whitehurst may have waited a little too long to let that one go. And, you know, that's a play that they've opened up with, I would say, at least three or four times this year. They hurt Santa Cruz with it the first time of the year. They hit San Lorenzo Valley, Kuma Hatton catching a touchdown. That's a play-action pass. They freeze the secondary. Now, I have to tell you this. I think Palma is probably one of the better prepared, better coach teams in all of high school football in this area. They play a very sound defense. You're not going to beat them deep. Norm Costa, the coach of the Palma Chieftains. Larry Sousa heads the North Monterey County Condors. Whitehurst back to pass again, looking the other way. Throws right in the middle. That's Hatton again. He breaks away from a couple tackles, but that's good for a first down. Whoa, whoa. I'll tell you, that ball was zinged. You know, I have seen Todd Whitehurst play for three years now, ever since his sophomore year. He always say, seems to save the best for the last, I mean, or for the best for the big-time games. And once right now, that was a great big-time throw. Kim Hatton has those great hands. He comes back for the ball, and he was very effective running the crossing and the curl pattern there. So, first and ten for the Condors. Whitehurst, we've got Tim Emerson, number 33, at one half back. He's in the middle. Brian Jackson in motion. It's Emerson with the ball. He's brought down after a gain of about six yards. Well, they had some leverage on the outside, didn't they? And, and Mike Bro, number 72, who I've gone on record as saying is the best offensive lineman ever to play in this county, came out and made a heck of a lead block. That's a little bit of an A-trap kind of thing. They put a little motion. That's a little switch up for North Monterey. They haven't done much of that. The offense not taking long in their huddles. They're moving right along. Todd Whitehurst faces a third and five, a, a second and five. He's back to pass again. This is three passes in a row. He's looking deep, right down the middle, Kuma Hatton. And he makes the catch. No, they're going to call it an incomplete. Looked like he had it. It might have been the ground that jarred it loose. Well, Adam Sweet was back there, but he was beat badly. And not only that, but they had Calderon up in the middle. They ran almost a double post, double streak kind of pattern to the left. Both guys were open, and Todd just picked the choice, and he hit. He hit he hit, uh, the ball was a little back ball a little bit. He had to lean a little bit for that, but Kuma probably normally would catch that ball. So third and five, and the fly offense, nothing. That The fly offense is designed for the run, and we've got three straight passes here, so we know what kind of game it could be. That's right. Larry Sousa in North County wanting to get on the board quickly. I'm sure they want to get in command early on. The handoff on the, the fly, man. That's number 13 for North Monterey County, Gabe Blanco, who also does the kicking duties. And he gets a first down for the Condors. Interesting play. They come in a real tight double wing formation out of it and run the sweep. That was kind of really good play calling. Roger Sugimoto coordinates the offense. Roger Sugimoto is the man that implemented this offense, brought the offense to uh, North Monterey, and he's the guy that's making it work. And uh, he, he just has that canny, that uncanny ability to call the right play at the right time. That was a gutsy call. Third and five run the sweep. Huh. So first and ten, North Monterey County on their own 48-yard line. Todd Whitehurst, Covino Calderon in motion, gives it up the middle, and no gain. In fact, a loss of about two yards. And that was that was typical Norm Costa defensive team. No one took the fake. It was a reverse inside with Emerson finally getting in. Dirk Giannini played that beautifully. Stood, right, held his ground, and didn't give up ground, and, and was right there to make the tackle. I'll tell you, he is one heck of a football player. We saw him against Aptos last week, Rusty. And he was super. He's a great defensive football player. One of the leaders of that all-Italian roster. I tell oh, you, there's God. more syllables in this roster than, the, than there are commercials of Monday Night Football. Well, Here we go. It's second and 12 yard. Oh, Whitehurst evades the rush and throws incomplete. But a nice bit of uh, footwork there by Todd Whitehurst. Well, he avoided the rush, but the rush, you know, they do it base, though. They're, they're not coming with a lot of blitz and stuff. They're getting it done. And last week against Aptosh, remember, they sacked uh, Trent Dilfer a number of times, at least four or five times. So they had that ability to put the rush. That was a pretty good. Now they're faced with third and long. Now we'll see what Roger Sugimoto pulls out of that magical hat of his. North you know, County has a lot of weapons. They have Bryant Jackson, one of the halfbacks, along with Tim Emerson and Gavino Calderon, the fly man. Tim Emerson is wide along with Kuma Hatton. He's looking over the middle. That's Victor Baltier, the tight end, and that's good for a first down. I think that is, I, I, I have to say, I think Victor Baltier is the key to the run offense. 
and I think if he's not the most valuable, I think he is the most valuable player for North Monterey in a lot of ways. He catches the ball, he plays great defense at inside linebacker. He always comes up with the big darn, the catches. Of course, Todd got him the ball, but what happened is, is that Palma went into too deep, left that middle zone open, and boom, he's right there. He's got great speed. He's the perfect answer to that middle row between the run and the pass. So he Victor is. Valtier, tight end. Brian Jackson's the flyman lineup with Tim Everson behind him. And the give is to Gabe Blanco, and no gain. In fact, another loss of about two yards. So Gabe can't get it done on that play. Same man there, Dirk Giannini. I, I think um, you'd almost disband running that way because he is a pretty good football player. I try to run away from him a little better and try to cut him off. Giannini, number 88, the left tackle, 6'3", 220-pound junior. Yeah. If you'll notice, throughout this Palma uh, lineup, there are a lot of juniors peppered through there. Second and 12. That's Gavino Calderon in oh. motion. Winers back to pass. Gets it off. A tough rush there by the Palma Chieftains. Well, last week he was a player turn. That's Benny Veramontes. And last week he put the pressure on uh, the Aptos quarterback. And again tonight he's right after it. Yeah, Walter Sims. Walter, Walter Sims, Sims was in on that tackle too. And that was a name we mentioned a lot last week. He's another junior. Yeah, and he is a fine football player. He's a stocky guy in there. Now, they came with a little bit of linebacker blitz, and they're going to have to do that. I think that's a good game plan against Todd. Put pressure on him. Try not to just let him throw the football up and down the football field. Third and 12 for the North Monterey County Condors. They're just past midfield on their own 42-yard line. Whitehurst drops straight back to pass. Looks to Tim Everson. He's made the catch. Tries to break one tackle. Can't. And it looks like a gain of about one yard. Yeah, not much. Really good defense on Palma's part. And they have stopped North Monterey. But they're not going to have real great field position. You know, they should get a decent kick here. So the punting unit for the Condors comes on the field. 8-15 left in the first quarter. You know, this is a switch. we got Whitehurst doing the punting, Rusty. And, you know, he hasn't to my knowledge, done any punting all year long. Maybe they have him back there for a fake punt situation. It's got to be a tremendous advantage having the quarterback. He filled at the low punt well, and that punt straight up, which is exactly what you want. Oh, they're going to have great, great field position as far as the defense is concerned. Number 44 for North Monterey County, Darren Story covering that kick, and so Palmer will take over, but deep in their own territory. Looks like the eight-yard line. Yeah, eight or nine, somewhere down there. That was a great, you know, maybe they bring Todd in for the short punt. Have them just kind of pooch it. We used to call that the pooch kick when I was a kid. You pooch it up and then have everybody cover down. That was well executed on uh, North Monterey's part. Kick it away a couple times, then try the fake when you need it because you got your quarterback back there. Well, you know, they were in the hole a lot last week, Palma, that is, against Aptos, and they had that ability to snap out of it. Speaking of quarterbacks, Brian Maestri is the QB and the senior QB for the Palma Chieftains. They run the fly offense, too. They run it up the middle there for no gain is the... <laughs> swarming North Monterey County defense does a job on that play. And Gildersleeve carried the ball, and, uh, you know, it takes you a good amount of time to figure it out. But, you know, Rusty, he gained five yards before he was thrown backwards, almost a long five and a half. He is, I mean, you can't follow the ball, folks. I tell you, I didn't know who had the ball. I just saw the action afterwards. Gildersleeve runs four or five. He is, uh, he's got as much juice as any running back as I've seen in this league in a couple years. Gildersleeve, the slashing halfback, and Ben Veramonte, so we'll hear a lot of is the big fullback, and he'll be knocking some heads out there. They're going to go outside. It looks like a gain of about, well, up for the first down, and I can't see who carried that ball. Well, that's number six. Remember, we got a lineup. We got a, a number change. He wore... What happened to that number <laughs> change for us? Number six for the Palm of Chieftains. I don't have it on any of my lineups. Here it is. Number six is Mike Backel, or uh, Backel, uh, back, back league, excuse me, uh, five, seven hundred forty pounds. Gained a thousand yards versus JV competition, so they probably brought him up for this game. He probably did not play in the Watsonville game. No, I don't think he did. I... Well, that was good enough for a first down, so Palma... Fly man on the move again. They're going to give it up up the middle, and he gets a nice chunk of yardage for about six yards. Gilder sleeve again. They, that was the inside trapping game, and they are, I think, that Palma, you know, we talked a little bit about this earlier, Rusty, but I think that Palma's offensive line is as good a high school offensive line as I've seen in a long time. And, you know, we talk a lot about Mike Bro, but I want to tell you, Carlos Rivera, number 75, their right tackle, is flat out a great high school football player, and he's being recruited by virtually everybody. Stanford and Cal, I understand, are here tonight taking a peek. Abu, he's a 3.8 grade point average. 
Second three for the Palma Chieftains. The lineup they like to see. They pitch outside, and that's the big fullback there, but he doesn't get anywhere. Ben Veramontes. It's going to be... Uh it's going to be third down, but uh, it's going to be fairly close to the sticks, Russ. Well, they're going to be about Start a yard shy, yard and a half. Third and one, so a big test here for North County. They can stop them here. They can get good field position themselves. You know, Paula may go for it, too. They have such great confidence in their run game. Last week in the rain, they turned the ball over four or five times with uh, because of the slipperiness of it because they used a leather ball. So we'll see what happens here. Ryan Mastry, the senior quarterback. That's 31. The give right up the middle. That's Gildersleeve, and he's good for the first down. Good call, Frank. I, I, um, I, I'm baffled by. It. He attacks people when he runs. I don't know how it's to describe it. He kind of like he gets off the ball. He just runs four or five, and he attacks people. I think he's he is really good. He reminds me so much of Greg Lane, who played here for Palma too. Is now at Hartnell College, um, a, but but probably even more explosive. Not as big as Greg was. 5.31 left in the first quarter. No score. North Monterey County had the ball first. Eventually had to punt. Palma with their first series. They now have a first and 10 on their own 35-yard line. The give to the flyman. Up the middle for about three yards. That's number 25. Mauro Stiano. Mauro Stiano. They do have an all tie in Again, look at this, Rusty. That's a four-plus yardage gain. They're looking at second and about six yards. They've been able to control the clock and the time. The same thing they did last week against Aptos. I, the quarterback, Maestro, too, I might add, goes both ways. He plays offense, defense, hold for extra points, does the punting. He reminds me so much of, of my uh, stepson, Trent. I mean, they do the same kinds of things. Except Trent actually told me he plays a little more than he does. Hmm. He has to hold for extra points. Trent gets out for those. Second and six yards to go for the Palma Chieftains. Gildersleeve in motion to the outside, and it looks like delay of game. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's funny. They haven't made a single error, and then they just kind of take too long to go. You never can tell what, what, why, you know? That'll bring up a second and 11. And this is a kind of a situation that Palma doesn't want to get into. I don't think Maestro is even where near the, the throwing quarterback that... Uh, that uh, uh, Todd is, Whitehurst is, but but he has that. He can go. They like to go play action pass and look at the tight end. All right, so facing actually a second and twelve. Although they've had this ball for a long time, they have not gained a lot of yardage. Maestri's back to pass. Looks for a split end over there. It looks like well, number that's six our number six, Mike Backley. That's it. And he gains about six yards, so that ought to bring up a third and eight. That was a good call because they didn't get, you know, they got some of it back, but they didn't get all of it back. But now, you know, I mean, they got they got just enough. They didn't try to get greedy and take it all. You know, they're not going to throw the ball down the length of the field against North Monterey. The best way is to pound them on the ground and make those little play action passes. Big well, down here. One thing they didn't do was throw the ball very much last no. week, and when they did, it was incredibly effective. Third and seven, 423 left in the third quarter. They're going strong receiver-wise oh, over here to the right side. The bottom of your screen, a good rush. But Maestri gets it off, and that's going to be good for a first down. I'd nice. say, oh, that was Giannini that caught the ball, but they went into their duck. That was a nifty football play. What they did is they um, put number 45, uh, the big fullback, Benny Veramani's out here, and then they came motion. They ended up with two receivers on one, and then they dragged the tight end underneath. Giannini, who's got great athletic ability, caught the ball for a first. That's a big play. That was a well done. I, we didn't see any of that last week, obviously, but they didn't do any of that last week because they were in the mud so much. But this has been a great drive. Rusty, they've come from their own nine. They've moved the length of the field practically here. Now at their own 49, first and 10 for the Chieftains. In motion, the fly man. He gets the ball, and he's stuffed right there at the line. That was number 20, David Martinez. And Rick Burton, uh, the left defensive tackle, gave tremendous chase on that and, and really forced the, the running back to widen his lane a little bit. Good defensive job on that, on uh, Burton's part there. I imagine this has to be one hungry defense. I mean, they, I think right about now their pride ought to be getting dented just a bit. Well, I don't think North Monterey's defense has been, you know, super duper this year. They've won with their offense. They've gone up and down. They have given up a lot of yards, both in the air and on the ground. I think
think they're vulnerable defensively. Or they have been. Second 11, flyman Mauro Stiano in motion. Long count, straight back to pass, the give to Viramontes, and he cannot break any tackles, a heck of a play by Mike Rowe. Well, you know, Bro was, I think, the second guy to get there. I'm not sure it was the defensive end out there. It was uh, uh, number 85 for North Monterey. Uh, Aaron Blackwell made the first contact, played it very, very well. So a very nice play by North Monterey County, their second stellar defensive play in a row. I think they got a penalty against uh, North Monterey, and I think it's face masking. We'll see. Well, there's some kind of a penalty. It is a face mask, and it's a major infraction. So they'll stop off 15 yards, and that'll be good enough yep. for a first down. It was a personal foul. I didn't see the face. There was no face pass. It's just a personal foul. North Monterey has gotten themselves in trouble this year. They did against Aptos, and they've done it in tight games where they have just made a lot of mistakes, made some unnecessary penalties. That's one of them. They don't need to penalize. They need to just come out and play. This could be a first down. It's not an automatic first down, which no. is interesting. Yeah. So they're going to bring it out to measure it. It's going to be short. Nope. It is a first down. So Palma on the move on their 40 of the 40 yard line of North Monterey County with 305. And this is ball control at its best with a break or two. Well, let me go over the referees who have just gotten into the action. The referee tonight is Frank Cardini. The umpire is Doug Downer. The line, line judge is Roy. Egenhausen, the line judge uh, is Dana Peterson, the lineman was uh, Roy Egenhausen, the back judge is Frank Dyer. All right, first and ten for the Palma Chieftains, just under three minutes to go here in the first period. Maestri and company on the move here. The give to the flyback, that's number six, Mike Backleek, and he gets about a three-yard gain there on that play. Well, I want to thank the Palma coaches for coming up here and giving us this kid's name. Obviously, he's going to play a little bit tonight. And you can see that he played on that undefeated uh, Palma JV team, which went 9-0-1, and, and he gained 1,000 yards on that. So they're just kind of waiting. To, you know, you can do that. You bring the JVs up, you give them a little experience, you give them that varsity uh, feel, you know, because you keep them down there, and uh, he's coming up and starting. Not a very big guy either. No, he's not. 5'7", 140. It's like one of those North Monterey backs, like Emerson, Calderon. Second and five for the Chieftains. Flyman in motion. They give up the middle, but nothing doing there. Looks like that was number 30 for the Palma Chieftains. One of their other big backs, Pete Vitero Vitorisi. Well, Pete Vitorisi. Vitorisi was the one that went 54 last week against uh, Aptos on a trap play. And he's, he's kind of, they have a number of backs they run in there. It reminds me of, uh, you know, uh, Dewey Tompkins, also Cal Knights, you know, running guys in and out. You never know their names, but pretty soon, you know, each one of them, they, none of them have those big stats, except for Gildersleeve, of course. But by the end of the season, they all got three, four, five hundred yards. So, third and five, big play for both the offense and North County defense. Oh, my word. With Maestri fakes it, and he goes wide, and a nice play. They're going to string it out, but Maestri, on a great effort, gets the first down. Well, that was a tremendous effort. I think he ran out of the 20. Uh, he ran out of the tackle of Alex Abera, who's not a very big guy, who's 5'9", 145 pounds. He just ran out of that and made a great effort. They say that... Um, Maestri is just one heck of an athlete. He gets it done. You know, he may not be the fancy big gun shooter type of guy, but he gets it done. So good enough for a first down. Palma now marching their way to the 30-yard line of North Monterey County and chewing up the clock. There's only a minute left here in the first quarter. You always want to watch when they get the ball and when they give it up. It isn't very often. Maestri pitches outside. That's Vitorisi again. He's knocked out of bounds after a gain of about three. It's kind of is like a wishbone kind of attack, isn't it? I mean, they only throw when they really, really have to. When they do, they're pretty, when they throw it, they're fairly effective. But they just kind of grind you to death, don't they? There's a penalty flag on the field, and probably in the low block on the part of Palma. That's a major infraction. So that ought to take it back 15 yards. And in high school, a lot of the low blocks, illegal blocks, are major infractions. Yeah, and, and I think maybe that's something that the pros may think about. You know, there's been a lot of controversy with 49ers block, too. I really think that um, the, I, I just don't, there's no need to go down to people's legs, especially young people who aren't getting paid to do this, you know, aren't 
you got to protect them at all costs. That's why spearing is an automatic ejection in high school and why leading with the helmet and with the head is automatically um, a 15-yarder, and it should be. So this could be a big crimp in the Palma offensive drive here as now they face a first and 25. And it's, instead of being on the 30, they're on about the 45-yard line. So first down for Maestri. Let's see what he does. We've got Vitorisi down on the bottom of the screen. Fly man in motion, long count. He's back to pass. Looking downfield, nowhere to go, and finally the defense collapses. Ooh, there were a few folks over there, weren't they? This, these guys are really hitting hard tonight, I tell you. You, you can hear it way up in the booth. We have headsets on, it really kind of muffles the sound, but you can, there is some intensity out on the field. And uh, my history turn, you know, that should have been almost a six, seven, eight yard loss. Somehow he was able to wiggle out of there and get some positive yardage. Still their face was second and at least 20 yards, Rusty. Of course, if you can't get up for this game, what game can you get up for? Oh, it's the right. last one on the road. That's it. 11 seconds left in the first quarter, and I don't think they're going to get it off. Six seconds, and the time counting down. So, after one full quarter of playing, an exciting quarter it's been, although there's no score, we'll be back with the second quarter of action here in the CCS Championship game right after these messages. things go together. Visit Straw Hat Pizza today at Highway 1 and 41st Avenue, the crossroads of our community. There's a new sports car emerging on the roads of California. 1990 Geostorm, 12-valve multi-port fuel-injected engine, power steering and brakes, digitally tuned stereo and more. Special first-time buyers incentives could be no down payment. You'd expect a sports car like this to cost over $14,000. 1990 Geo Store, $99.75. Today at your Northern and Central California Chevy Geo dealers. Well, Frank Lynch, the Palma Chieftains have had ball control to perfection. They had the ball about eight minutes of the first half. First quarter, I should say. You know, they've done what they've had to do by playing. They've played good defense by keeping the ball on the field forever and keeping it out of North Monterey's potent offensive hands. That's what they've done, and they've done a very, very effective job, as they have done all season. You know, they're a, they're 11 and 0. They haven't won 24, but they're 11 and 0. I'll tell you, they're a pretty fine football team. North Monterey County had their hands on the ball one time. Eventually, had to punt after a long, about a 60-yard drive. Forced Palma way down to their own nine-yard line, but Palma is on the move. They still have the ball here in the second quarter, and they're down to, it looks like, about the North Monterey County 42-yard line, and it's taken them a long time to get that far, but that's exactly how they want it. Well, they've done it on little bits and pieces, you know. They've gone three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, yards in a row. They haven't, you know, they've gotten little chunks of it. They haven't gotten greedy and tried to throw the ball deep. They may go play action pass, and if they do, look for Giannini. He is an awfully good receiver. Giannini's out wide along with Gildersleeve. Vitorisi's behind. We've got a second and 20. Maestri's back to pass. Pump fakes. He's looking deep. Kuma Hatton on defense, and Gildersleeve is just covered too well. Yeah, well, they, that time they went with uh, Mark Cesaris out there, Rusty, number um, 41. It did look like Gildersleeve, and I think that's a good play to put Gildersleeve out there because he's probably faster. I don't But um, it, that's not their forte. He ran what they call a wheel. He ran an out pattern, tried to get the defender to bite on it and run up the sidelines. That's what looks like a wheel. They call that an, an out and up. So now Palma faces, uh, it should, uh, stick says second, it should be a third and 20. And I think North Monterey County is in the driver's seat on this play. I mean, they got to go deep. They're going to be playing the prevent D. Here we go. We've got Gildersleeve wide. Oh, my you back to pass. The pass won't do. Good call there. He turned number 57, came from the inside linebacker spot, and he hit that. He did a nice job. They kind of hit it to the last minute, and boom, he timed that beautifully. Nice job of blitzing. So that'll force the punting unit to come out for the Palma Chieftain. So North Monterey County bend, but not break. That's right. Well, they forced uh, Palma to go the length of the field practically to get. They got, I don't know how many first downs they got in that drive, but they probably had about 
six first, uh, six seven first downs, and that that was a nice drive by Palma, and kind of sounded the gun, saying, "Hey, hey, we're not intimidated by you folks. We're out here to win this game as much as you." And I think they think they can win. So Palma back to punt. We've got Bryant Jackson and Gavino Calderon deep, standing on their own ten yard line. Just the start of the second quarter of action here in the CCS Championship game. Camino Calderon circles under the oh. punt, bounces off his shoulder pad, and it looks like Palma has recovered on their own five on the North Monterey County five-yard line. Oh yeah, Mario Chacon, number 52, a 5'10, 215-pound tackle junior, made that play. It was bounced right off Calderon's shoulders. You know, he went back, he didn't know whether he was gonna fair catch it or not. It looked like he was really forced into a little bit of an indecision. The ball bounces off his pads, boom, right in the right in the arm of 52. Big break for Palma, Rusty. Big break for Palma. They're now on the five-yard line. No score in this game, but we could see things change here. They're on about the five-yard line. Maestri, the quarterback. Gildersleeve in the backfield. The lone setback. This is their little double wing kind of formation. They'll go right at it. Gildersleeve. The give. That's Gildersleeve, and he's in for the score. Touchdown, Palma. I'll tell you. They, they really loaded up on whoo, that right side. Well, they go with Giannini over there, and they just flat out knock people back at the point of attack. And Gildersleeve is a, is a streaky little runner. He just kind of burrowed his way in there. He didn't get touched. See, I think he thought he was going to get shelled at the line of scrimmage and just kind of kept hovering out in there and scored. What a nice play. That's a little double, I don't know what you call it, a little double wing over there. That's pretty potent, though. So James T. Cap set to kick it Whoa. through the uprights. It does just that. So with 11-23 left in the second quarter, the Palma Chieftains take a 7-0 lead over the North Monterey County Condors. Well, Rusty, James T. Camp kicked it out on the Highway 129. I'll tell you, that ball was flying. He really creamed that thing. That was a great kick. You know, Palma's got to be excited. I would say to get on top first would be the critical issue here so that you don't get your daubers down against uh, a team that's 124 straight. So Gavita Calderon is deep on the kickoff unit, and this ought to be interesting. He's getting a pep talk back there deep by one of his teammates, and this is the type of thing, it's like falling off the bike and getting back on yeah. it. You know, let's see what he does here. He's got to... Well, Gavino's a champion, Rusty. He's been back there before. All these North Monterey, they have this quiet... I don't know, quiet confidence in themselves. You know, they can be down 7, 14. It just doesn't make a, a bit of difference to these guys. So Gavino, all alone, back on his 5-yard line. Maestri getting set to kick the ball off. The quarterback, like you said, he does a lot of chores it all. on this football team. Guy does it all. There goes the boot. Unbelievable. And that'll go out of, and through the end zone. So North Monterey County, like they did in their first possession, will start on the Paul 20-yard line. Well, that's the problem when you put a single safety back there, is that you can really kick away from a single safety. Most people like to stagger or duel, put two of them back there, because then you can cover half of the field and get you guaranteed at some sort of a return. That ball was catchable on about, it hit on about the six or seven and, and rolled into the end zone. So if you could catch it, you know, and you get 18, 20 yards and maybe a chance of busting it, it's really a, a better deal than sending one person back. So here comes North Monterey County. It's their second time with their hands on the ball. Kuma Hatton split wide. Gabe Blanco's the fly man. Todd Whitehurst, the quarterback. He's back to pass. He's looking, rolls, and throws just to Tim Emerson. He steps just inside the sideline for a first down. He looked like a pro on that, didn't That was a great throw by uh, Whitehurst and a great catch by uh, Emerson, who only has to get one bound, one foot in bounds, but went and stuck both in bounds. Nice play, Tim Emerson. One thing about Todd Whitehurst, he seems so much like the classic drop-back passer, yeah. but he can throw on the run pretty well. Yeah, he's... He's got, um, he's got very active feet. I mean, he's not a slow guy back there. In fact, against Aptos, he ran over a bunch of guys. He's a load. You know, he's got to be 216, 217. He's huge. Whitehurst, they give up the middle, and that's good for about seven yards, make it eight. That was Jackson, Bryant Jackson, and I'll tell you, he's quick as a cat, too. Isn't he? Those guys get off the ball. Simple dive, simple straight-ahead dive play. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I remember when we used to play Mar Hartnell when they were so super when I was at Cabrillo all the time. You kind of wanted to lull them in the sleep. You never wanted to sting them too bad because then they get mad at you and come back and crush you. And it looks like, you know, North Monterey's countering. They're counterpunching right now, and they're saying, hey, wait a minute. We, you know, you've stung us a little bit. We're after you. We'll show you who's good. Second one. 
Single back off. Tim offense. Emerson, the single back back there. Gavino Calderon in motion. Oh, oh, great defensive play, and they stack up Whitehurst. And look who it is again. Oh, I thought it is Giannini. These numbers are little on the chest because I think he's such a big old guy, but Giannini is one heck of a football player. He came. That was great. Now they're faced with third and four. My, my, that really a swing momentum a little bit more, Rusty. Palma fans just jumped out of their chairs. You know, folks, this is what high school football is about here. Rusty and I, as you and I look around, it is standing room only. There are no places to sit in this stadium whatsoever, which means that we're looking a minimum of 3,000 and probably more like 38, maybe 4,000 folks here tonight. So in front of 4,000 people, Todd Whitehurst drops straight back to pass, looks over the middle, the Valtier, and it's knocked away. Nice play by Maestri, but there's a flag on the field. Pass interference. He got to he got to Valtier a little too quick. It was probably a good play, but he flicked it out, but it looked like he got too much of his body on Valtier. Yeah, that's what they're going to call. So a first down for the Condors. 9.49 left in the second period. Boy, they've looked potent, haven't they? Both teams offensively have looked potent. It's just that Palmas kind of takes their time a little more. They're like kind of a wishbone team. They take five, four, six yards at the cracks. And uh, not North Monterey. It looks like they can gobble up huge, huge pieces of real estate time and time again. So the pass interference will bring the ball down to the Palma 44-yard line as North Monterey County makes the long run to the line of scrimmage after their huddle. They ran fast up there, didn't they? Tim Emerson, Brian Jackson, two backs in the backfield. Gabe Blanco in motion, Whitehurst, the give. That's Emerson, he breaks up the middle, he's got a lot of room. Nice run, Tim Emerson, and that's what he does best. Yeah, he does, and that was a nice one by Maestro. That's the inside trapping game. Emerson, just great burst of speed and moved up the field. Maestro had to finally knock him down, but look out, folks. North Monterey, that stung him, you know. They're, they look excited, don't they? You saw the side there. They have been untouchable for 24 straight games. And I'll tell you, you know, Palma comes back, you know, takes the lead 7 to nothing. That's got to be a bit of a slap in the face. And, well, it's wake-up time for the Condors. It may be. It may be. Gavino Calderon in motion. The give to Gavino. He looks for a hole. Breaks it upfield. He cuts back across the grade. And he's got another first down. A nice tackle by Palma there. Yeah, that was uh, Adam Sweet, number seven, who was a big star of the game last week. And he came up and made a great play. And uh, number 45, Viramontes, is a little slow getting up. And uh, I... I North Monterey's offensive line that time, Rusty, just crushed people over there. People are rolling all over the place. This is like bowling for dollars. There it is, knocking people. They're getting what they call decleaters. They're taking the people's cleats out of the out of the ground. First and ten on the Chieftain 16-yard line. The give up the middle. That's Brian Jackson, and he brings it down to about the 13-yard line. Oh, this is. A this is a pretty exciting game. I can't even talk anymore. My uh, heart's pounding a little bit, but they tend to want to go over the right side. They want to go over Bro while we're on that side and get their yardage, as I might too. Mike Bro is six foot three, 268 pounds, coming off the ball, and he's a great drive blocker. And that's I guess you got to go behind. They picked up three, four yards on that, and it didn't look like there was a lot of room, was it? Three yards on the pickup. That brings up a second and seven. Whitehurst calling at the line. That's Calderon in motion. It's the give to Gavino. He gets nowhere. Nice play there. And that's Giannini. Giannini again. Giannini again. It's like Giannini. He's going against Bro and uh, Garcia and Aaron Blackwell over there. I tell you, it's, uh, it's a tough lot. Excuse me. He's going against Schwartz, the quarterback. Brian Brennan is the right guard and the right tackle. Mike Bro and Victor Valtierra is playing the tight end. And they just keep going right, right, right. Big play here. It's third and six for North Monterey County. Let's see if they can cash in. They can get a first down without a touchdown. Whitehurst back to pass. Play action. Looks over touch. the middle. And that's Brian Jackson at touch. the touch. yard line. He's in for the score. Yeah, he the ball crossed the line. It was a great catch by Kuma Hatton. I'll tell you, that sucker, he was right six inches in the end zone. A great pass by Todd Whitehurst. That was not his primary. So a heck of a march by the North Monterey County Condors, and this side of the stands are alive. As they should be. I'd say that was a great drive, and uh, that was a Todd Whitehurst show there, folks. I'd say it was coupled with some key runs by Jackson, and, and uh, but uh, they got after it pretty good. Gabe Blanco set to tie it up. Oh. The kick is good. Good. And good. So with 7.53 left in the second period, we've got a 7-7 ball game. And what a game it is. We've seen three really nice drives. So oftentimes championship games never
never look like championship games, but this this is really acting like a championship game. Two great football teams battering one another to death here before 4,000 people here at, at Geyser Field in Watsonville. This is just a sight to behold. I love it. I love it. So Norm Costas over there, what's he going to do to regroup to tell these guys? Oh boy, I think they got to go back and do what they've done so well. You know, they got to go back and march the ball down the field and try to control the clock. Their best defense is to keep Todd Whitehurst and that offense at North Monterey off the field. They need to control the ball with their offense like they did last week. 7.53, mark that in your mind. You know, let's see how many minutes they run off the clock now. Almost eight minutes on the clock. And, you know, traditionally their drives take six, seven minutes. Let's see if they can gobble up a whole second quarter here. I'm sure their game plan is to score Absolutely. with only seconds left in the half. 7.53, that's almost eight minutes. Here we go. With the kickoff, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. North County just scored. The kick is deep. It will be taken back there by the deep man. Gildersleeve. That's Matt Gildersleeve. He brings it up to the 20-yard, 30-yard line before he's driven out of bounds by North Monterey County. So here we go. Whew. You've got a fired-up defense and an offense who just wants to take it nice and easy and just run it down their throats. Well, this is the time maybe if you're... Uh, Palma where you might want to play action pass and hit your tight end, get them, because the defense is so excited and they'll bite on anything. The other thing is, is with Palma, and, and I, we, we're looking right now at Carlos Rivera, who is everyone's uh, 3.8, he, he's their best basketball player too, I tell you, the guy is one great athlete, so it, it, it'll be interesting, anyway, we'll see if they can concentrate and run right. Look for the play action pass, they like to do it in this situation. All right, my astray of the quarterback, he's got Gildersleeve and Viramontes in the backfield. It looks like a fumble on the snap, but Maestri lands on it, and that'll be a loss of about three yards. Boy, they didn't need that now because that's a, you know, the momentum's clearly against them. They need to operate right now. That's a six-yard loss, five-yard loss anyway, Rusty. Now they're in a position where they don't want to be, which is second and 15. So now like, they're forced to fat pass, and it's no longer a surprise. Well, you know, they, they really need to relax a little bit now. They're probably a little nervous, and uh, they need to back off a little bit. And, and I don't think they should disband the run now just because it's second and 15. In motion, Gil Maestri back to pass, evades the rush, gets it off to Gildersleeve, but he cannot track it down, but he was wide open. Well, they came with Valtierra, the other inside linebacker. You know, last time they came with age uh, hurt, number 57, and this time they came with 45. Valtierra put tremendous pressure on Maestri. They're just opening up the holes. What North Monterey does is they're coming to kind of a split look inside where the guards are covering the guards, and the center's uncovered, but I don't think, you know, after you snap the ball, it's hard to pick up those guys blitzing past you. So North Monterey County is liking the situation now. Ooh, Palma faces a third and 14. We've got Gildersleeve in the backfield along with Viramontes. Flyman in motion. It is the give up the middle, but nothing doing there. And that's a bit of a surprise. Well, you know, they, they haven't had a lot of success throwing the ball. They want to stop the blitz somewhat, but... Uh, I kind of think I'd go to Gildersleeve if I was going to hand the ball to anyone, you know. They, they really believe sometimes on a third down play it's good to trap because the defensive linemen are coming up and they're not reading their keys, they're not looking to the inside, you can blow them out of there and get a big game. So I don't know. If, All right. If so it had worked, it would have been good. Yep, yep, yep. Palma back to kick, and we've got Cavino Calderon and Bryant Jackson back deep. Two very lethal weapons for the Condors. The kick is up. It looks like Brian Jackson will have a crack at this one. Takes it on his own 40. Gets up to about the 47-yard line. Nice tackle by Clune, number 40, who was a key player last week at the tight end spot, catching the, the second touchdown for uh, uh, for Palma. He's a real good high school football player. He goes both ways too. So. Someone we haven't mentioned a lot, and he was, uh, you know, coming into this game, I thought we'd be mentioning his name a lot because he does go offense and defense. So, first and ten for the Condors. They had a nice defensive stand there. They're just short of midfield on their own 47-yard line. And here comes Todd Whitehurst. Looks like Bryant Jackson, I think, the lone setback. He and he's going to Jackson, who catches it in the flats, but it goes through his hands. So, second and ten. Yeah, but, you know, credit number 45, uh, Victor Val... Not Valtiera, but... Uh, Viramontes. Viramontes. Kind of Valtiera, Viramontes. But anyway, he put a lot of pressure on...
pressure on Todd and really kind of force that ball a little higher than Todd really wanted to get to it. Bryant needs to catch, catch the ball first. You've heard that a hundred times, catch it before you run. And he was kind of looking up the field. He had a little bit of uh, open spaces there. Second and 10 for the Condors, 5.55 left in the second quarter. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Look at the coverage on, oh, okay. Two back, Whitehurst back to pass, throws right over the middle. That's Cavino Calderon, breaks one tackle, gets another yard out of it. Looks like he's about two yards short of the first. Let on to bring up a third and two. That was a great throw by Whitehurst, uh, Rusty. He, he was on his back foot and rifled the ball over to Calderon, and they do a lot of that. They'll throw to the backs into the middle quite a bit, kind of like almost delay patterns. That was nicely executed play. And a nice run by Cavino Calderon. That guy is not a big guy. Oh, no. And, you know, he's oh, 170 no. They, pounds. No, he's not 170. Wet. Yeah, yeah, he's not 170 pounds. They have him listed at 170, but, you know, um, if he's 170, I'm uh, <laughs> 215 and on the hook. I'll tell you, he's, he's a lightweight out there. <laughs> Third and two for the Condors. The pitch out to Brian Jackson looking for room. There's a flag on the field. It looks like he did get the first down, but we'll see what the infraction is. It looked like it was away from the ball, too. It kind of... Why, it looked like it might have been on number 66, Tom Bethello, for holding, or couldn't have been for him. 66, the center, Dan Schwartz, for North Monterey, and it was a holding penalty. And he was away from the ball. It just, it, it's such a silly thing sometimes to do. Reach out and tackle the guy. Reach out, yeah. Yeah. Well, with that so common, you know, you just, you don't know how to give up sometimes if you're an offensive lineman. And those darn hands, you know, if you can't effectively keep them. The bad thing is, is that he probably had his outside hand. Uh, where the referee could see it. The inside hand oftentimes holds. In fact, you lead with your hands, and if you can grab with the inside hand, you won't get caught. But you get caught with that outside hand sometimes, and you get the 15-yarder. So instead of a first and 10, we'll have a third and 11 for the Condors. Davino Calderon brings in the play. The quarterback, Todd Whiters, 5-0-3, left in the second period. 7-7 seven, seven tie here in this championship game. Tim Emerson, Bryant Jackson in the backfield, Gavino Calderon the fly man, number 32. Oh, fumble, fumble on the snap. Whitehurst looks like he just did get in there to get it. Palmas says they have the ball, but Whitehurst did recover it. Yeah, Whitehurst did. It's fourth down. So, a lot of momentum and they hit the brakes. Yeah, interesting. It, it, they kind of fluttered a little bit. You know, you get that penalty. Penalties have been their Achilles heel uh, as far as a T, or Achilles tenant, excuse me. That's been their problem all season long. They hurt themselves with a penalty. And again, it's Whitehurst back to punt. And this is no little pook punt. This is a big punt. A He's big got to really root this So thing. he must be the punter tonight. Another that low snap. snap. He does it nicely like the oh. baseball player he is. And that's why he's punting back there. That thing goes a mile. Rolls down to inside the five-yard line. And just inside the end zone. Boy, they were this They're calling close. that a touchback. They're calling yep. that a touchback. They are. It's oh. a touchback. So Palm will have it back to the 20. But oh. that had a long roll on it. A little better, a little more speed down there on the end. Well, Rusty, he kicked that thing. Well, it was a good 40 in the air with the roll. You're looking at, um, it was about a 55-yard kick. Boy, where's he been all year? I wonder. You know, that's kind of curious. Well, you know, maybe he's been practicing getting ready for this moment, you know? I mean, you know, Aptos has done that all year yeah. the last two years with Trent Dilfer. Yeah. He's punted, and he's been the quarterback, which I think is the ideal situation because you could fake any time you want. Well, We'll see what happens later in the game. There's 4.15 left here in the second period. Paul Bonnell, first and 10, fly back in motion. The gift to the fly man uh, looks like you know, number 25, that's Diano. He gains about three yards. Yeah, going to the outside. And, and you know, they're still pretty, you know, they haven't knocked themselves out of this game. Palm is one of those teams that just kind of hangs in there a little bit. and. And uh, watch them, they're hanging in here. It's 3.52 on the clock, and, and you know, uh, they've got the ball, and, you know, they're in their old perennial uh, grinded up offense. Now they're looking at only a second and seven for them. That has been good for them this year. Of course, now Palma with only three and a half minutes to go in the second period. I think we'll have to up tempo their offense just a little bit more than they're accustomed to. Mastery, the quarterback. He's got Veramontes. He gives it up to Gildersleeve up the middle. First down. Nice play there. Little little hand slide there. It's a little counter dive play, and it well actually, you know, I don't think it was Gildersleeve, Russell. Nope, it's you're right. You know, I can't follow these guys. I mean, this uh, Peter, what Peter Vitarisi? I mean, his slide of hand back there, uh, in my opinion, is just 
stupendous. He just is, he just hides the ball. He looks like Frankie Albert from the old days. Should have had a little pasta before this game tonight. Yeah, Shoot, yeah. I forgot about it's, this. I would Gildersleeve sitting over resting. All right, here we go. It's first and ten for Palma. The give up the middle. That's the big guy, Veramontes, but he's gotten nowhere and has it all game long. No, they tried to trap that inside, and that was just not executed very well up front. He just got stuffed. No, that's not Veramontes. That's Vitorisi again. Vitorisi. So. Okay. They're trying to run it, but uh, H. Hurd, number 57, made the tackle. You know, his brother was one of those famous inside linebackers. I think it was Hurd. And I can't remember the Hurd, other. Hurd, Serino? Or something like Ed. that. Ah, anyway, they were awfully tough for North Monterey in there. They were the, they were kind of like brothers out on yeah, that football field. Heard. Here we go. It's second and nine. Flyman in motion. They give it to the other side. That's Veramontes. Number 45 breaks two tackles, three tackles, and rumbles just short of the 40-yard line for a gain of about, well, I'd say five tough yards. Yeah, even a little more rusty. I'd well, maybe, anyway, but uh, finally brought down by uh, Valtier, number 45, the inside linebacker. But he did. He just ripped through people. Now they're looking at third and three. I think Palma's going to kind of control the clock a little bit here in terms of not getting too excited. They want to get a little more field position before they open it up. Because if they have to punt to North Monterey and they're only looking at 50 yards, they can cover 50 yards like no one. You know, they'll be there tomorrow, right now. They're going to get in the end zone. So they're going to kind of eat up the clock, I would guess. Vitorisi, the low back, Adam Sweet is way wide to the right. It's the give to Vitorisi up the middle, and he's good for the first down and then some as he gets across, well, not quite to midfield, down to about the 46-yard line of North Monterey County. Good, strong running, and he leaves Victor Valtier, number 45, in his wake, among others. That was a tough, determined run. Now that the clock stops, now maybe with a 138 on the clock, maybe, just maybe Norm may think about throwing the ball a little bit. Look at, they're kind of hustling in and out. They're kind of got a hurry up offense with the running game. Well, they've got one receiver. That's Adam Sweet at the top of your screen, number seven. He's against the best DP. Fly back in Bush. motion. It is the give. That's Diano. He cuts it back against the grade up the middle, and he gains about 11 yards. Good, it looks like, for a first down. Yeah, why run? Why throw when you can run the football as effectively as they did? And actually, I think they're a little afraid of the blitz inside because that time they came with uh, Hurd, and they were able to wall him off. Everybody reached, blocked. Everybody reached to the play side, which is to the bottom of the screen, walled everybody off, and Stiano had a good burst of speed. So... But what? less than a minute, Russ. One minute. One minute to go in the first half. It's second and a foot to go. Back to pass by Astri. He's looking. He looks deep. Oh, oh a nice grab there. That looks like Clued. Clued. was a very, Clued. That's Clued, number Clued. 40, their big receiver in the clutch like he was last week. He just, he just jumped up and pulled the ball down, and he was covered very, very well on the play, and I don't know by whom, but there were a number of them out there. He just got it done. That was a great team. I don't think the defenders really knew where the ball was. He ran away from them and to the ball, and they weren't going to the ball no. like he was. Right. He jumped up to the ball. Palmas finally called timeout. But 43 seconds is all that remains on the clock, Rusty. So Kevin Kloon, clutch play, brings him down to, looks like about the 17-yard line of North Monterey County. 7-7 seven, seven tie. And, oh, Palmer, if they go in with a lead at the half, they oh. got to be coming out smoking in the second half. Now, the other thing that I will mention is that Maestro number 16 had Mike Grove 72 in his face, you know, chasing him like a madman in there and was able to get the pass off. You know, he's one of those unclassic looking quarterbacks that probably just wins, you know. There's been a number of them through the history of the game of football. They don't look real pretty, but somehow the ball's always there and they're always uh, on top at the end of the game. This is the second year that Maestri has led the Palmo Chieftains to the playoffs. Last year, Palmo played North Monterey County. However, it wasn't in this championship game. It was in the first round. Right, right. Well, last year's championship game was a 20 to nothing North Monterey win over Watsonville. And, um, and they just, uh, North Monterey wore out Watsonville in the second half last year. And that was at Cabrillo, so, which is condemned, as we all know. Look at the 88 now on this play, uh, Giannini. You may, if you're going to throw the ball, you're probably going to go to he and Kloon because they're the two tallest, biggest receivers. Except Kloon's not in the game, so. All right, first and 10 for the Palma Chieftains. 43 seconds left in the half. 7-7 seven, seven tie. They're on the 16-yard line. It's the pass into the corner. It's going to go out of bounds. 
That's kind of clever. They fake the quick pitch, which is such a good play for them. And the quarterback stands up and throws it down the field. And, um, but he was actually, well covered that time. And actually a wise choice to throw it out of bounds. A lot of high school quarterbacks will try and force that yep, in. Absolutely. On the coverage was Alex Abera, who was victimized earlier on a great run by uh, Maestri when he ran him over. So he's not a very big fellow out there himself. Uh, Alex is only, they have him listed at 5'9", 145, but they, they look smaller. I mean, they, he's a legit 145-pounder. Viramontes, along with Vinarisi in the backfield. Maestri back to pass. Pump fake, he looks the other way. Oh, six. He's looking, that's a touchdown. It looks like Vinarisi down there in the corner. It is a great catch by Peter. That's a throwback seam to the halfback coming out of the backfield. I think he was either coming out or he's lined up in that offense out of the out of the tight end spot. But uh, Vitter, but Maestri made everything come to the right. He got Kuma Hatton to bat bite to the inside and threw the ball up the sidelines. Well executed football play. They had to pull one out of the hat on that one. So James T. Camp in the kick, the PAT, with 31 seconds left in this game. In this half, the kick is up and good, as true as the last one. So the Palma Chieftain takes a 14-7 lead. And Vinarisi, he doesn't start. You know, he's a guy you may not prepare for. I, you when, know, he, when he goes to the other side, when he's in, you may not have a linebacker who specifically has number 30. He's a senior. You know, they have him listed here at 5'11", 210 pounds, and he runs pretty fast, I'll tell you, because he came out of the backfield, so he must sub in there at tight end, and he probably plays a lot of defense. He's been, you know, against Aptos, he was the backbreaker. You know, he ran that 54 first touchdown was 54 yards. He's a fine athlete. Great call. Great call by uh, the coaching staff of uh, Palma. The so only thing is they left too much time on the clock, Rusty. They, they left 31 seconds on the clock. So you think North County can do something with well, 31 seconds? Well, I do. If they get great field position, you know, they're, they can throw the ball deep. Well, I remember at the beginning of the season, Todd Whitehurst was able to throw the ball 80 yards, and at the end of the season, I had heard, I, was, I don't know if this is true, his goal was to throw it 100. Well. <laughs> I remember Roman Gabriel could do that. Well, yeah. The North Carolina All-American, right? Here's the kickoff. Gavino Calderon gathers it in, and it goes back yep. into the end zone, so that's an automatic touchback. So we ought to get 31 seconds back on the clock. There's 28 now. That's right. Well, I would think that the timer, timer, they couldn't have run any time off of the clock, right? The clock I should run when it hits the kicker's hands. And if he caught it in the end zone, there should be no time that ticked right. off. So right. let's see if they reset that. It could be, you know, with 28 seconds left in the half, that's a precious three seconds. Yeah, yeah. They're going to add three seconds to the timing clock because they show 28 seconds up there. We do have the fortunate fortune of having the timer right next to us. He's going to add three to this, and he thought it was able. But the ball, once it hit in high school, once the plane of the goal line is uh, crossed by the football, it's an automatic dead foot dead ball. Right, you don't have the choice to bring right. it out. And again, that was done to eliminate injuries with downfield blocks and late hits and things of that nature because that's what, that that really, people really get hurt with that kind of stuff on kickoffs. 31 seconds left in the half. Baltier, Kuma Hatton, split wide. Gabe Blanco in motion and they give it up the middle to Tim Emerson and he gets about two yards so it looks like they're going to play conservative. Yeah, I think they maybe were trying to pop a quick trap there but they're not caught using it. The, they're not using the they're not calling a timeout. No. The clock's ticking down, 14 seconds. They're oh. not going to get another playoff. In fact, they're letting it go. You're so, right. nine seconds, and it looks like that's going to be our halftime score. The Palma Chieftains up 14 to 7, 3, 2, 1, and that's the half. As North Monterey County lets it run up, they're going to talk about it with Coach Larry Souza in the half. North Costas is going to give a big pat on the back to his Palma Chieftains. They're leading 14 to 7. They're playing super, but no. His Palma Chieftains, they're leading 14 to 7. They're playing super, but North Monterey has played very, very well. A few penalties hurt him, but uh, you know, but the turnovers have hurt him. Calderon's turnover and the and the instant turnaround with a touchdown for Palma. Oh, what an exciting high school football game! Great game, and it's only going to get better. We'll be back with the second half right after this. Getting set for the second half of play in the Central Coast section, Division II South Championship between the North Monterey County Condors and Palma Chieftains. And Frank Lynch Palma takes a 14-7 lead into the second half. A big seven-point lead. And they're going to get the ball to begin with in the second half. And they have to do with what they did what they did in the first quarter, which is control the football. 
get lots of first downs and run time off the clock because it looks to me like they really cannot stop North Monterey once they get cranked up. That is when North Monterey gets cranked up. Frank, I'm actually surprised at this score. I never would have thought North County would have gone in down by seven at the half. I'm not surprised. I saw Palma play and, and I think Norm Costa does as good a job as anyone preparing people and I thought they had a chance tonight. Bad kick. There's the kickoff skimming along the ground. Picked oh. up at the 30-yard line, but what a tackle there. That's number 73 for North Monterey County, Frank Jeremy Becker. Oh, man, 6'5", 215-pound junior, and he laid lumber. But but the running back didn't look real decisive on that, did he? He just kind of stutter-stepped in there a little bit. Let's see if Palma probably go back and do what they do best, which is run the ball with Gildersleeve in there and Val Teresa. Val, Val Teresa. Oh, Veramontes, there's Valtier, there's lots of bees, there's up. lots of Italians. <laughs> there's 11.26 left on the clock here in the third quarter. And here come the Palma Chieftains, first and ten. They give up the middle. Nice seam there. That's Matt Gildersleeve, and he gets a gain of about 13 yards. I think he's a good running back. You know, he's not a very big person, but he flashes in there. And what a way to start. That's a trap play. You know, and, and as, as we sit here and watch, and maybe the fans can get a look at this a little bit, watch the offensive lineman for Palma. And, and really, if you're a defensive coordinator, you tell your inside people, read the guards. And let's see if we can read them this time. If the guards go straight ahead, they're going to run the dive or maybe throw the football. If they, if they pull out, that's where the ball's going to go. So watch where the guards go. Let's see if we can focus on that a little bit. Guards number 66 and 68. Number 22 Crap. in motion. That's the give up the middle. The big number 45, Ben Veramontes. And he gets about a foot. And the right guard, number 68, Billy Rover, trapped inside. And that's where the ball went. I can, simple, isn't it? Yeah, right, right. I can set that offensive line. We've got Mario Chicot's left tackle, Tom Bethello, the left guard. At center, it's Walter Sims, who doubles as a linebacker. Billy Rover, the right guard. And at right tackle, Carlos Rivera, along with Kevin Clune at the tight end. So there's your front line at this fly offense. Good offensive line. Number six, that's Mike Backley, the fly man in motion. The gift to Backley. He tries to turn it up, does, gains about four yards. Nice job of blocking that time. Rivera, I mean, Carlos Rivera, number 75, the right tackle, just mowed some folks down. Nice running job, too. Boy, this is a nice tri a, a nice training ground for back, back league. Oh, I yeah. Mean, you know, the pressure can't be on more than in this game. You pick him up from JV. Yeah, I know, but, you know, maybe he's... You know, uh, some of my JV kids came in when I was in the playoffs as a coach, and they did as good a job as anyone. I think it's because... Maybe they're too dumb to know that they're supposed to be afraid. And it's, you know, they're too young and dumb kind of thing. But he's performed admirably tonight. Maestri and company facing a third and five, and he'll call a timeout. Didn't like the D, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Or he didn't like the offensive call when he went up to the line of scrimmage. Basically, that, that uh, you know, it's a third and a pretty long play for Palmer. You're looking at third and, and a long, long five yards, five plus. So that's a pretty sizable play for them. They like the third and three and third and two and that kind of stuff. So it kind of gets them out of rhythm a little bit here. Something you noticed before the game, and I can bring it up now, we have a little bit of time, is, you know, we've seen a lot of nice trap plays, and you notice this is a very fast field. You look at the grass there, and it is as low cut yeah. as can possibly be, without being real, you know, muddy or dirty. No. It's like a nice fast field, sort of like the Coliseum down in L.A. There's the old condor bird out there, Rusty, but, you know, you're so right. And the other thing is, is that they had 10,000 people stomping this thing last weekend, so... You know, they're out here, and the, they, the grounds crews for Watsonville High School have done a marvelous job of getting this field ready, and they're part of this whole CCS thing, and, and they deserve a pat on the back, as the Watsonville coaching staff and Ron Galino, their athletic director, for hosting this event and making such a nice show for everybody. 9.40 left in the third period. Maestri will have to bring his troops back into a huddle, but no, they'll let him play as we have number 25, the flyman, Mauro Stiano, along with Gildersleeve and Viramontes in the backfield. Back to pass, throws over the middle, block, just tipped away by Gabe Blanco. Oh, what a nice play, and it bounced so hard that it hit Jackson in the hands, and he wasn't able to control it. They're going back, they're throwing the backside post to, guess who, number 88, Giannini, and they just got there just a little late with the ball. Nice defensive play by uh, North Monterey. Nice call as well. You know, you get the yep. play action, you look and run, back to pass, a quick release, but to no avail, thanks to Gabe Blanco. So Palma back to punt, fourth and five, back deep. Bryant Jackson, Gavino Calderon. Whoa, 
Bad snap. A little high, controls it, goes towards, a little short. Nice roll, it's gonna get a great roll inside the 20. That's 17, Rusty. And that's where the North Monterey County Condors will take over with their fly offense and quarterback Todd Whitehurst. And what a powerful offense they have. And I saw him get a few words uh, from Roger Sugimoto. And Todd's one of those guys that only has to go both ways. So he's got a lot of juice in his legs. He looks like he's ready to go out there. He's sprinted out there pretty good. So I'm sure they know that they got to get it done now. They're still down by seven. First and 10 for the Condors. There was a shot of Roger Sugimoto there. He's done a great job coordinating their offense. Todd Whitehurst looks like Emerson in the backfield. It's the gift to Tim Emerson, and he's dropped for a loss. Nice play there by number 68 for the Palma Chieftains. That's Billy Rover. Yeah, nice nice defensive pressure in there. Penetration kills an offense. We've said that so many times the season goes on, but if you get across the line of scrimmage and knock those guys down, boy, before they can get, get upfield, that's the key. That's the key, penetration. Sometimes you have to gamble to do it. When you gamble too much, sometimes you can be hurt, but if you can get penetration, you're going to win most of the time defensively. Uh, Palma attacks on defense. They don't sit back and read. Tim Emerson, the lone set Boel, along with Brian Jackson. Whiter's back to pass. He looks over to the sideline, wide open. It's Gavino Calderon, and he dropped makes it. the catch. He dropped it after, stepping out of bounds. Oh. So that's good for a first down and about a 20-yard gain. Nah, he dropped it all the way, Rusty. I thought, I actually, I thought you were right on that too. It was clearly in his hands, and Whitehurst took a shot on the knee after that penalty, after the throw. He had a lot of pressure on him. Now they're looking at a third and a sizable, you know, almost 11 yards here. Might see Victor Valtierra. You might saw see him last time at third and 12, and they surprised yeah. everybody. May not be as big of a surprise now, but the guy can get open over the middle. Yeah, he can. They got Kuma Hatton runs that deep curling route in there pretty well too, so that's what they've liked to do. Although he's getting almost a double cover in the press two deep. Kuma Hatton, gay block or wide. It's a throw over the middle, just tipped away. Nice play there. Nice the pass caller. was intended for, for Victor Valtierra. You were right on on that call because what happened is Palma came up to a two deep zone where they are, where their safeties are forced to play halves of the field, and you split it with the tight end, and Todd was unable to get the ball to him. And we got Whitehurst back punting again. Last time he rolled one for 55 and really rooted it. Let's see what he can do this time. The junior, West, wave, or Adam Sweet, I should say, very deep along with Gildersleeve. Whitehurst lets a fly, a good rush, and another nice punt. It is Sweet. He picks it up in midfield. Uh -oh. Gets it up to about the 45 and falls down at about the 41-yard line where Palma will take over with very good field position, probably their best of the game. Yeah, yeah, it really is. They haven't, they, this is the first time they've really had a short field, the other side of the 50, and let's see if they can take advantage of it. Now, you know, they're almost in a four-down area. They're almost, because their offense is so tidy, in other words, it doesn't get big, lot, big groping yards, so... They, they look like they're in a four down area almost. They can kind of hunt and peck you a little bit. Here. Right, so instead of a third and five being the big play, it's going to be fourth and five. That's right. So here we go. We've got the fly man. That's Diano. He's in motion. Guards goes. The gives is Diano. Whoa. He tries to break it around, but a great defensive play there. That was Hurd again, Rusty. Age Hurd. I guess he has kind of a funny first name, and he kind of thinks, but it's A. They, per, they spell it A-G-E, and it's pronounced age. Or it's A-G, I guess. And we found out the name of the other uh, inside linebacker, That's Rusty? Paul Cerna. Paul Cerna. You're, you're a great up with, Who teamed up with Ed Hurd last year as the, the terrorist duo in the middle at that linebacker slot. They call themselves the Block Brothers or something like that. <laughs> they grew up. Pop Warner, they went the whole route. They were tough. Went all the way to the CCS Championship last year. North County's trying to do it again this year. Blitz. That's the give up the middle. That looks like Gildersleeve, but a nice tackle there. A gain of only about three yards, but right. a good play there. Who's that? Number 73 for the Condors. That's uh, Jeremy Becker, who's been a force. You know, the opening kickoff, he went down and made a great tackle. Now he played good defense. What happened is they came with the inside blitz, and Palmo tried to weasel outside, tried to screw, and uh, Gildersleeve's the guy to get the ball to. They have not gotten much offensively in this uh, beginning of the third quarter here, Russ. Gildersleeve, the setback. We've got number 30 for the Condors. That's that's Pete Vitarisi as a split in. Thrown over the middle, no good. Yeah. See a flag. There's yes. pass interference. H yep. Hurd hit number six. 
um, our man Beckley again on that on a crossing pattern but look at this Maestri's flat out on his back he took a shot he hung in the pocket as long as he could he's laying down it was a passing it was going to be a pass interference call against North Monterey so a little bit of good and a little bit of bad for yeah. the Palmer Chieftains. They can ill afford to lose Maestri, who does a lot of stuff on this field. He's their cornerback. He's their quarterback. He's their punter. But I think he kind of got the wind knocked out of him. It looked like he was his feet weren't in the air, so it wasn't planted. So he kind of uh, was kind of flying through the air when he got hit. <coughs> I kind of I looked up Phil. I to, for the pass. I don't even know who it was back there to hit him. I. I I'd hate to think that it was Mike Bro. I wouldn't like that guy pounded me. Awful big guys hitting him, I'll tell you that. You know, his feet moved. <coughs> I, you know, it's really dumb to make a call on this, but I kind of have a feeling he might have just gotten the wind knocked out of him. They're kind of dealing with the solar plexus down there. Age hurt. So they'll be working on Maestri, the two-year starting quarterback for the Palma Chieftains. 642 left in the third quarter. Palma holding on to a 14 to 7 lead in this championship game. Yeah, he's up. He's up. Well, that's a good sign. Both like arms. He probably went. did just get the wind knocked out of him. I think so. I kind of think so. You know, he, he, he plus he might have gotten dinged a little bit. I mean, he got shelled back there, but it was his courage that did it. He hung in the pocket as long as he could. What well, they can go with Adam Sweet looks like he's going or David Brandon, number seven, is going to be the backup quarterback. He's a 5'8", 155-pound junior. The man who will step into the slot next year. So, you know, you good a time as any to train, right? You bet. They do that, too. They, people just come in and out. First and ten. They're on the North Monterey County 20-yard line. You know they're going to be running. I doubt they're going to have Brandon stepping back to pass. Long count. Flyman in motion. It is the give to back league. He turns up field, gets about, looks like, three yards. And they're trying well, to... <coughs> maybe know. not even that. Well, they used the sideline very well there as a tackler, and they uh, did a nice job with that. So, North Monterey's tough to run outside. You know, they see the fly offense an awful lot, so... And there we go. There's Maestri back in after one play. So yeah. good to see. Yeah, very good to see because he's a guy that makes it happen. You know, the trigger man in offense, the quarterback, is a guy that's got to pull the trigger, and he's the guy that gets it done. Brian Maestri is second and eight, 6.05 left in the third quarter. Flyman in motion. It's to give up the middle, and that's Vinarisi, and he gets nowhere. Mike Ooh. Bro and company. Yeah, Bro, uh, Hurd. Um, also in there was Rick Burton, and they just walled that off. They didn't have anyone fooled on that one. Gildersleeves, you know, now they're faced with another third and long situation. They've been successful so far, so. But I think they really are in fourth down. They just need to pick up maybe a good seven and then come back on fourth and get the first down. I think that's probably what they're thinking, too. They're not They're not going to take a lot of risk now. They have a seven-point lead. They may throw, but I don't think it'll be too much down the field. I think it'll be a nice conservative call. You know, Rusty, there's got to be 300 people sitting outside the fence. There is an incredible amount, almost as many as inside that are outside. Mark Cazares is out wide. They're going to throw to him. He, nice, he almost had the catch, but a very nice play by the quarterback there for North Monterey County, Alex Ibera. Nice job by Ibera on that one. He really closed fast on the football because it looked like a completion, and then he just closed on that ball, made a nice tackle. Now we are forced with the fourth down, and it looks like they're going to try um, a field goal by Camp here. See, this would make it a 43-yard field goal. That's a boot. And it I'm is. I'm sure they don't try that bit well, very often. No, actually, it's 30. It's, it's a 47-yard field goal. There's the snap. The placement's good. He slips in the block. Oh, it's a live ball. It's a live ball. Kick goes nowhere. It was recovered down there. Hurd had it. The Number line. 57, A. Hurd got the ball. Yep. Didn't get that plant foot down. Slipped right off the of under yep. him, and that ball didn't go any further. It's three right. feet off the ground. Good defensive series for uh, North Monterey. It was only the penalty that allowed him to go down the field. Now they have to move the football right now. 5.08 in the third quarter. Yep, they've been, you know, they, they scored and they drove on their second time. They had the ball, and and before and after that, they haven't done much of anything. And they got to come out. They have to be as aggressive as they were that one drive. So let's see how they do. Tide Waters brings them up. Gabe Blanco's the fly man. Tim Emerson in the backfield along with Brian Jackson. It's the give to Jackson, and a little conservative there. Well, I'm not – they just – 
No, Palma's defense, you, now, as a viewer, you got to watch these guys. I just watched them. They were slanting to the call side that time. Where the ball went, their whole down line, everybody slanted and moved that way. That was great defense. They play a gap. They're a kind of a gap defense where everybody's got a gap and they got to get to that gap and they're aggressive. They attack. They don't sit back and read. And watch Gilder. Uh, Giannini is playing the nose tackle now where he's playing like a guard in there, defensive guard. He's a good football player. So 11 and 1, Palma doing a heck of a job on defense. There's Tim Emerson with the ball. He looks for a hole. He gets one. Gets across the 40 yard line to the 41, and that's on North County first down. Yeah, yep. See, they have to go outside because I don't think they're going to have a lot of success running inside. It's just that because Giannini is awfully good in there, and that time Giannini in number 45, the fullback, is um, uh, Benny uh, Viramontes, did kind of like an X loop in there. So they're on the march. They hardly spend any time in their huddle. We've got Jackson and Emerson in the backfield. Blanco in motion. It's the give to Emerson up the middle. He spins and squirts his way for about four yards. Yep, yep. Pretty good run. It looks like the offensive line for North Monterey. In this case, it's uh, they're starting to get a little leverage on the defense. Emerson last or this year at 62 carries for 424 yards. We're at 6.8 average. All the North Monterey backs have these big averages, don't they, Rusty? They sure do. You know, seven yards, six yards a run. One thing interesting about Tim Emerson is last year, he had over that yardage in the first three games of the season before yeah, he, he got hurt. This year, they've really been able to spread it around with Calderon, with Bryant Jackson, with Gabe Blanco. Nobody has more than 400 yards on this team. That's Bryant Jackson with the ball. He gets some room outside. He gets down across first down and across midfield. And Mike Bro came back and clobbered. Clobbered number uh, 51 for Palma. Um, Casey Angle said, welcome to the Pac-10, because that's where Max, that's where uh, Bro's going, and he just <laughs> flat out floored him. Whew. I bet Mike Bro gets a few of those, too. Welcome to the Pac-10. Oh, he'll he'll have a few of those, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he'll have his eyes open. I'll tell you, you take a step into the Pac-10, you better be ready to go. He'll, he'll redshirt as a freshman. He's not going to play as a freshman. Three, oh, well, three minutes even left here in the third period. North County is at midfield. Big Brian old. Jackson creates a huge gainer right up the middle of the field. That's good for about, oh, about 18 yards. Brian Jackson, heck of a burst. I'll tell you, that was a great offensive play. That was a trap play, but, you know, 77 John Winnick and uh, H. Hurd and Dan Schwartz and Brian Brennan and Mike Bro are dominating the game right now, and that's the difference. They're starting to hammer them up front. And here they come again, again, spending no time. It's nearly a no-huddle offense. Yep. They get back on the ball so fast. First down, here we go. North County, Whiters, back to pass. He's looking deep down the middle of the field. That's oh. Camino Calderon. He was open, but a bit overthrown. Yeah, the ball took off just a little bit on him, but he was wide open. I mean, wide open, but uh, Gavino looked like he kind of gave up on the ball. It was kind of hanging around the 10. Todd Somm threw it, and instead of, and if he had been in a full acceleration, it would have been six points in the end. I think I'll tell Gavino you may have seen the, the, the seam in there, yeah. going to stay inside those kind of hanging deep out. Safeties. Right, yeah. right. Whew. That was a heck of a throw by Todd. I mean, his arm looked awfully strong on that. We saw him earlier in the season, and I didn't think his arm was as strong as it. It just looks awfully strong tonight, I'll tell you. Timeout by North Monterey, Russ. So with 2.31 left in the third quarter, Whitehurst will talk it over with Sugimoto and Larry Souza on the sideline. Well, I'll tell you what, the play came in and Todd shot, the play was brought in by Jackson. He didn't understand it. He goes, I don't understand. What, what is this? I don't know. And he, he decided it'd be better to call timeout at a time like this with 2.31 in the third quarter and do it right. Todd Whitehurst, the swan song for the senior quarterback. He's led the North Monterey County Condors to two CCS championships. One his sophomore year over the SoCal Knights. Another his junior year over the Watsonville Wildcats. And, you know, he wants nothing less this year. And, you know, frankly, if it comes down to, you know, the thing where it comes down to the last minute, you got to figure that this senior, the aged veteran, has got to pull it out. I, he's just such a good athlete, you know. He's also a very good baseball player and a basketball player. He's a big guy. He's got a great arm. He's been here before. He knows what it's about. As a sophomore, he had a great CCS playoff game against SoCal to win that one. And, and against Watsonville, he was brilliant as well last year. So, you know, he's done it before. He's been here before. And uh, you kind of got a bet on him, don't you? I think so. It's, third, it's second and ten 
Down the Palma 35-yard line. He's back to pass. Here comes the blitz. He gets nailed as he let go of the ball, and it's intercepted. Bye-bye. 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 Bye -bye. Oh, he stepped out Going along the sidelines. Matt Gildersleeve finally went out of bounds, but Whitehurst took a shot. Well, H. Hurd closed on him awfully fast, and he's the, uh, H is the uh, left guard on that. Excuse me. No, he turned on that awfully fast and was able to close him and save the touchdown. What happened was they came with blitz. Whitehurst saw the blitz, but Kuma Hatton, his wide receiver, didn't see the blitz, threw the ball up, and, and Kuma, all he had to do is turn around and catch it. So the first turnover of the game for the Palma Chieftains, and they take over on the North Monterey County 41-yard line. They're up by 7, 219 left in the third period. Awfully big break, awfully big break here for Palma. Backley, the flyman in motion. It's the give up the middle to Vitarisi. Slides a little bit outside for three yards. You know, going back to that last play, Rusty, the thing about it is, and, I, and I, I've always had this bone to pick with wider. They have to recognize the blitz just as fast and just as rapidly as the quarterback. And what? And, and if they don't, then they're running up the field like Kuma was that time. He didn't know that. He should have known that. Or he, maybe they hit it real well too. I don't mean to criticize, but he should have turned around and come back and gotten that football. What happens is the quarterback can't be the only guy recognizing it. It's a team team thing. All right, so Palma, 145. Now the clock ticking down. They're on the North County 38-yard line, facing a second and seven. That's Diano in motion. It's the give to Gildersleeve up the middle. He's good for about two yards. We're trying to bring up a third and five. And it's that ball control defense and big test for the North County defense here. But the key has been the way that Palma has played defense against North Monterey. And it, before they came with the blitz, and it's going back two plays, but what they're doing is they hide things so well. So they come up to the line, they look like they're coming blitz, they come to a cover two defense, and they bounce to a cover three, which is three deep, and they got I think they got North Monterey a little baffled now. All right, here we go. It's third and four. Let's see if Palma can cash it in. Big play for the Chieftains. They want to keep this drive alive. Maestri pitches. There's a fumble. And North Monterey County bobbles. It looks like number 75 for the Condors landed on it. And that's Art Ramirez, a junior. A big 255 junior. Art Ramirez. And so they're going to trade turnovers. Boy, I'll tell you what an amazing. What a big, big turnover. Big Dan Schwartz, the offensive center, lumbers out there. But, you know, they went counter option on that. And it's the first time we've seen any kind of a counter play. The ball hit the running back in the hands. He just dropped it. Brian looked up, looked for the hole, didn't see the ball into his hands, and fumble. So here comes North County. 45 seconds left in the third period. And this could be something that gets their blood going. Could be. This could be the drive. Four yards short of midfield. First and ten. That's Gabe Blanco in motion. The give up the middle. That's Brian Jackson. He's across midfield easily down to about the North De Palma 42-yard line with a gain of about 18 yards. Maestra again with the tackle. You don't like your quarterback in free safety making those tackles, do you? Whew, he was wide open. You know, that play has worked pretty consistently over and over again. Brian Jackson's been in the in the secondary before you even can uh, take a breath here. He really blows through that hole fast. Identical to that play about three minutes ago. Well, 20 uh, seconds to go. First and 10. Davino Calderon in motion to give to Tim Emerson, and he breaks for about eight yards up the middle. Gets hammered pretty good. Pretty good closure there. Number seven, Sweet, made the tackle on that, and they came up pretty close, but... You know, North Monterey's offensive line's doing it. If it wasn't for the turnovers, uh, you know, that's what's held Palma together is that changing defense. There go the press corps up and down the field here, huh, Rusty? <laughs> and that's the end of three quarters of play here in this championship game. It's going to come down to the wire like it should be. Two undefeated ball clubs. Palma up 14-7 to over the North Monterey County Condors. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter right after a word from our sponsors. A&W remembers fabulous fads. Yes, fads may come and go, but good taste never goes out of style. Like great root beer and these other great tastes at your local A&W restaurant. Refresh your memory with a 22-ounce Super Sipper mug of A&W root beer or a root beer float of the giant mug is yours to keep. So who cares what you might have forgotten? A&W always has a taste to remember. Whatever the occasion, you'll find everything you need to celebrate in style at Cash and Carry Santa Cruz. Cash and Carry 
Santa Cruz, your one-stop party shop for the Monterey Bay at 319 River Street in Santa Cruz. Time was, you sat down to a meal. Folks greeted you by name. John, sir, here's your lunch. And brought you food that was good and wholesome. You can still get a meal like that at Eric's Deli Cafe. Prepare to order and deliver to your table in the time it takes to drive through other fast food restaurants. And whether served inside, out on the porch, or if you're on the run, prepare to go at Eric's Deli Cafe. You always find old-fashioned quality that's fast, fresh, and delicious. Where will you shop for the holidays? Oh, I'll shop Santa Cruz County. In Santa Cruz, I've always shopped here. <laughs> bueno, a mí me gusta comprar en Santa Cruz. Más variedad en todo. That means in English, I like to buy in Santa Cruz. More variety. Think globally, but shop locally. I'm going to shop right here in Santa Cruz and reinvest my money here so there'll be something for the future for my daughter. Thank you, Mommy. Give a gift to the future. Shop in county stores this holiday season. It's a tension-filled ball game. First play in the fourth quarter. North Monterey County on the march. They're down by seven, 14 to seven. That's Gabe Blanco in motion. The give to Brian Jackson. Spins off one tackle. Gains about three yards. Well, two yards. Ought to bring up a third and one or maybe two yards. Big hit, but Brian Jackson was able to keep his feet, and, and he nuzzled pretty close to the first down. He may have a first down, Rusty. It's, they're going to bring in the chain. It looks like they're going to bring him out and measure him, but I don't think it's close enough yet. North, North Monterey County took the ball on the fumble right after Whitehurst threw that interception on the mix-up and the patterns. And uh, they seem to have regained a bit of momentum that they've been lacking ever since that drive in the second period. Well, they're not a very emotional football team. They really aren't. I guess it's because they won 24 straight. They just seem to kind of get there and get it done. You know, it looks it's going to be awfully close to a first down. It'll be third and about... Well, you see it, inch, I'd say, what was that, about an inch and a quarter yeah, he gave that. us there? I, it, looked, it was clearly an inch and an eighth, Rusty, you know? <laughs> we can almost well, see up here, I'd too, right? more like an inch and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this, they're, they're going to take two cracks at it right here. You know, Whitehurst can probably sneak for, um, you know, he's 6'5", crying out loud. He can fall for a yard in there, so <laughs> they're going to sneak for it. I don't know if uh, Palm can get off the ball that fast. They're on the Palma, just inside the Palma, 30-yard line, third and about an inch and a quarter. Whitehurst brings him up. Brian Jackson, Tim Everson in the backfield, Gabe Blanco, the fly man. It's the quarterback sneak, and he gets it easy. Yeah, but he gets hit pretty good, doesn't he? He gets hit. You know, Todd, in that situation, he'll learn this as he gets a little older. After you get the first, you want to get down. Get yeah. down. Don't let people take shots at your upper body. Because, you know, he's going to make a living with that upper body, not with the lower body. He's got to get down and protect himself. So 11.33 left in the brand new fourth quarter in this championship game. It's a tension-filled game. It's been great defense. The fans are just, you know, waiting for some sort of explosion. They really don't know what's going to happen. I'll tell them what's going to happen. It's going to come down to the last minute. No, <laughs> well, Rusty, you're a pro. At, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're going to predict it here. All right, ball at the 26-yard line. Whiters back straight to pass. Throws down the middle. That's, looks like Calderon. that's Calderon. Calderon. Calderon who hauls it in on about the two-yard line where he's brought down. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Did he thread the needle on that one? I'll tell you, that's a big league pass, folks. He got it in there. Calderon with a nice catch. Woo. Woo. This is some kind of, they've gone up the middle consistently, haven't they? But, you know, the key is Todd getting time to throw the football. He's back there. He kind of hangs around, waits for his man to break, and then can rifle that ball. Camino Calderon, a heck of a play there. The six foot, 170 pound senior. Seems like he's been there forever. They'll go right. Ball's on the one yard line. Here we go. North Monterey County trying to tie it up. Whitehurst, uh, the keeper. He's uh -oh. trying to beat out Viramontes. It does, but we've got a flag on the field. Yeah, you're going to get an offsides, it looks like, against North Monterey. Which instead of a first and one, will bring up a first and six. Right, right. That's a play, uh, it looks like illegal procedure against North Monterey, five-yarder. They did that last week again, or two weeks ago against uh, Aptos as well. And that actually, that play, that kind of naked bootleg where you don't come out with a guard by Whitehurst, he ran in for a touchdown against Aptos. So that's something they put in their repertoire. Repertoire, or how, how you pronounce that? Gavino Calderon brings the new play in. They will face a second and goal from the six-yard line. 
down 14 to 7. The Chieftains taking it to them offensively and defensively. Let's see what Whitehurst can do. Jackson's in the backfield. That's Calderon in motion and with the Touch. ball. He's going wide. He's got room. He's down to the five. Four. And pushed out of bounds at about the well, two one yard line. Hard to tell there. One people, one person's calling a touch. He's gonna be awfully close. They got him marked inside the Well, I'll tell you right now, it's inside the one, Rusty. I can see the referee's foot. It's about the six inch line. You'd probably want to go with the quarterback sneak or a dive play to Jackson on this. So quarterback sneak, this is the play where you get your linebackers in there and you punish the quarterback if he's going to keep the ball. You got we'll it. see if they you want to it. do that. Keep the ball. There we go. It's, it's the quarterback sneak. Whitehurst gets it in there. And the North Monterey County Condors will come within one. 13 to 14 with 10.34 left in the game. Now the decision to go for one or two, and I think North Monterey is going to go for one at this point and tie it up which is smart. Now, you know, if it ends in a tie, they don't have the California tiebreaker for this game. I read in the paper, so. That's it, huh? Yeah. Co championship? That'd be it. Boy. Yeah. Wouldn't we, that be marvelous? Get down to a California tiebreaker. That'd be great. This is, a big, this is a big kick. You know, the first one that Gabe Blanco kicked was a, kind of a bad kick, so we'll see what happens here. Well, the snap a little shaky there, but he gets it through on the line drive. So we've got a 14-14 ball game in this championship game. And I got I like to go back a couple plays, and that pass to Gavino Calderon by Todd Whitehurst, which set up this touchdown, was, like you said, a big league pass. It I mean, was he's big. what made this score happen. Absolutely. Uh, Todd Whitehurst, is, he's been the man of the hour tonight. He's pulled the trigger. He's gotten the job done at both. Uh, he, he has directed the offense, and uh, his throwing has been the real difference. He can, he looked big league tonight. I, I've been very impressed with him. It was a fantastic show by Todd so far. So now North Monterey County is, well, you know, if and when they get the ball back, if, if Paul is able to sustain another long drive, you know, North Monterey County has to come out attacking again. I mean, that's the only, they when they come out and they sort of take it a little easy, Palma just takes it right back from right. them. I, I don't, it looks like it's clear that North Monterey said, we're going to take this game and we're going to make it happen. They seem to be getting cranked up. The fans are cranked up. Everybody's cranked up. They're, the guys on the sideline are cranked up. There's the kick by North Monterey County's Jason Gilder Casino. Gildersleeve bobbles it a little bit at about the 12-yard line. Breaks it up the middle. Gets nailed at the 25 where Palma will take over first and 10. Amazing. Amazing. I'll tell you, you can really feel the emotion in the... Um, People are starting to chant CCS, CCS over here on the North Monterey side. They want this game as much as any game they've ever wanted in the history of this school. So they're excited. They've 10-26 on the clock, a 14-14 ball game. And folks, this game has been better than any game I've seen in high school in years. I'll tell you, it's been a great high school classic. Here comes the Palma offense. It's Brian Maestri, the quarterback. Gilder Sleeve back there, and they've got the double tights over there. Oh, nice play on defense. Oh, Aaron Blackwell looks oh, like. Oh. oh, he was not fooled, not tricked, not anything. He was just standing there. That's a quick pitch and that's a base play of the uh, of that fly offense. When they came out, they kind of put a lot of receivers over there and kind of flipped them the ball. That's why they loaded up that side, which has always been so effective, especially with Big Ben Veramontes over there. You know, I thought he'd go four yards just on the fall of the bodies. It's interesting. All right, that was a loss to two. Bring up a second and 12. Veramontes, Gilder's leaving motion to the outside. Veramontes, the low back. Maestri, back to pass. He dishes it off, and that's the ooh, nice tackle there. That's number six at Beckley. Yep, tackle there by the quarterback for North Monterey County, Alex Ibera. And for 145 pounds, he can put the hit on you. Yeah, he's, 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 you know, he ran one in last week, I think, for a touchdown against uh, um, Pacific Grove. That was a big turnover for them. I mean, it was a big, big play for them, and he's back doing it again today. Now, Palma is faced with third in a very long seven yards, Rusty, and this has got to be, this could be the play of the game for them offensively. If they make it, then they get another first down and are able to control some more of the clock. Two backs in the backfield, one fly. This is your classic fly formation. They're not going to throw it. They They're offside. Two man in motion. No flag. Looks like they'll get back. There's the flag. <laughs> There's a couple flags. The pass is complete over the middle. 
That's well, number 41 for the Palma Chieftains. Jason Martin, well, not Jason Martin, Marcus Saras. Yeah. But we'll have a legal motion. Yeah, they will. Mike Rowe making the call. He can, <laughs> he can umpire referee do it all, huh? So instead of a third and seven, they'll face a third and 12 and dig themselves into a deeper hole as the momentum continues to sway over to the black and silver side. It's becoming overwhelming at this point. It just seems like North Monterey is on the go and uh, Palma courageously hanging in there. And in that case, they just made another error and they just can't make any errors against a good football team. And this uh, North Monterey is certainly proving it tonight. Third and 12, well, they started in that flyback formation, shifted into a passing formation, brought back the pass, probably expect that on this play. By Estre, when he has to pass, has been effective. Can't hear anything anymore, Rusty. The fans have gone wild here at Geyser Field. Maramont is in motion. By Estre, back to pass. Looks oh. over the middle, and that's... A first down, folks. Boy, big play there. That's Caceres again, and he's... You know, tried to go to him several times before, well, twice before, and this time it finally pays off. Amazing throw by Maestra. He just stood in there, and he had heat, and he threw it. And uh, that is as clutch a performance and, and throw and catch as I have seen all season long. And give credit to that senior, that young man, Maestra, standing in there and getting it done. Give credit. That was a great, great effort on his part. So, first and ten for the Chieftains. They're up to the, well, their own 41-yard line, 7.55 left to go on the game clock. 14 to 14 for the CCS title. It's been a great, great football game, and still 7.45, still to go. Wonderful. Coming blitz. It's Baramontes up the middle, gains about three yards, keeps going before they finally blow the whistle. But for a host of up. North Monterey tacklers. Made. Is that what you're going to say, Russ? Uh, I was looking for another cliche. Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we got a lot of them. But you know, he picked up four yards on that, Rusty, and that's a, a big first down play, and it doesn't sound like much now, but you know, they've been, this is a courageous, this is a well-disciplined team, you know. Uh, uh, Palma has the ability to go out and get the top athletes in Salinas and in, the, in Watsonville and areas like that because they're a private school and they can, you know, they can legally recruit. I don't know if they want to hear you say that. Oh, I'm sorry, if I, but that's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> there we go. Big it's hole. To the flyback, oh. and he gets nailed. Nice play there, number 71. Rick Burton was in there, and so was uh, Mike Bro, and too. Both of those guys right there. You know, Rusty, that time number Bagley kind of kind of cut it back a little too quickly on that. He didn't kind of follow out and follow his blockers all the way. And, might have had a little more room if he kept coming outside. So they'll now face a third and a long five yards to go. Now it seems like every play at this point in the game is the key play of yeah, the game. Every it? play is the biggest play of the game. Here it we seems go. like it, doesn't it? Two third down situations back to back for Maestro, the quarterback. They're at their own 46 yard line. Gildersleeve goes in motion. No backs in the backfield. They will drop it back to pass, and there'll be too much time. Yeah. Yeah. Delay a game. Now they're going to be faced with fourth and a little more than ten. Two errors both times on third downs, Rusty. The double motion the time before. And now they're faced with third and five. And they um, just take too long to get the ball snapped. So that'll take it back. And they'll now face a third and well, about ten yards for the first down. You know, back they might want to go back to that same thing too, Rusty, because they had some they had some pretty they had some routes that they could have run out there, either a deeper turnout, but it would have only needed five. Now they need ten. It makes a whole lot of difference. All right, six oh nine left on the clock, standing still until the snap of the ball. Maestri brings the troops up. Stiano, the flyback, Gildersleeve, the halfback. Stiano in motion. Maestri back to pass. Looks back the other way. Wide open. That's Giannini. He fumbles after the catch. There's a race for the ball. Looks like North County has it. We'll wait for the signal. That's that throwback scene post route that they've run so effectively. But North Monterey looks like they got the ball. North Monterey County cashes in on a huge turnover with six minutes to go in the game. Gee, Palma was right there to kind of almost not put it away, but Palma could have been in a real good position. They would have been on the North Monterey 45-yard line, and they could have been on the march with another first down and another key pass uh, completely.
completion that time by uh, Maestri, this time to Giannini, and I kept thinking maybe they'd go back to that. Looks well, like we got our man down, probably the man who recovered that fumble. Looks like is Kuma Hatton. It is. It is Kuma Hatton. Yeah. He's back up, though. It's never a joy recovering that fumble. You know, you got to expect about six helmets to come yeah. flying into your ribs right afterward. So he got tweaked in the knee a little bit. He's kind of limping a little bit. He's all right. He's hey, so limp. say, I can go deep. Yeah, That's sure. Serious, coach. sure. I bet you cramped up a little bit. That's what it kind of looks like to me. Look at the fans here. What a great show they're putting on. North Monterey. Let's see what happens now. The Condors on their own 39-yard line. First and 10. They're... Tied at 14, just under six minutes to go. Gabe Blanco in motion. It's the give to Tim Emerson. Oh. Jumps over the middle and gets a gain of seven yards. What a great run on Emerson's part. He just volleyed. It, you know, he didn't jump out. He just went like a little jackrabbit. Come along, jump up. He reminds me of great Lance Allworth who played it, you know, played for uh, Arkansas. He, he used to jump up like that. That was a great play. Second and eight. Big plays made by by little players out here tonight and um, have consistently kept this game. What a great game. Valtierra, uh, the, the, full, the tight end's all limping out there. He's at the near side. Camino Calderon in motion. It's the give to Emerson. No, the great fake. That Calderon. Was right. That was the, the first man, which I think was Camino Calderon. That was. Yeah. Calderon Didn't have me going. No, he Calderon gets the first down. It was a big one for him. So they're trading in those flybacks, Gavino Calderon and Gabe Blanco, both doing a nice job along with Tim Emerson. And you know, they don't go to Brian Jackson until they need the big play and he keeps getting it. We'll see if that continues. First and 10 for the Condors. That's Gabe Blanco. It's the give to Brian Jackson. He gets a nice chunk of yardage through some traffic. Okay, he just tripped over some folks after gaining about eight yards because he looked pretty well stopped at the line of scrimmage. But, you know, you've got those big, huge offensive linemen for North Monterey, and they're just kind of pounding in there now, you know? you got Mike Groh, 268, Brian Brennan's 225, Dan Schwartz, 245 up front, and they're just, and Valtierra's two and a quarter. He's the tight end. It's amazing in high school you have a guy that big who's still catching the ball, yeah, too. he's a good athlete. That's Second it. and four. Trap. That's inside to Jackson. Gets across the 40-yard line, short of the first down. There goes those big guys up off the ball, though. They probably go about 235 or 240 up front average, including the tight ends. They're in a double tight end set. Victor Valtierra, number 45, is limping and hurting real bad after he comes out every play, but has made some great blocks. This time he lines up strong to the right. They'll go to the right this time. You wait and see. Jackson, that's Gavino Calderon in motion. It's the gift to Gavino. He finds the hole. Gets a nice chunk of yardage down to the 31-yard line. Whew. And it was Mike Bro just walled people off over there. Allowed Val Valtierra, the tight end, kicked everybody out. Mike Bro turned everybody out. The pulling guard pulls up in the hole. And whew, we're off to the races. And they've done it all on the ground. All on the ground this drive. They haven't thrown the ball once. 3.48 left here. The great... American 1988 cough off here between I Frank Lynch and I. Oh man, are we suffering Brought under. to you by Vicks Formula 44. <laughs> First down and 10 for the North Monterey County Condors. Blanco in motion to get the Jackson up the middle. He breaks it across the green. A nice tackle there Maestri. by Maestri. But not before Jackson gets eight yard gain there. Gosh. They're doing it all. I mean, you know, it, they're, they're running the ball, but they're running it off guard, off tackle, in the middle, outside, everywhere. They're just getting after it. They're going left, right, left, right. <laughs> Man, this has been a picture book drive here. You know, there's only three minutes and something on the clock, 3.09 on the clock, Rusty. They have chewed up the clock. They're the ones now controlling the clock. Second, three yards to go, the kind of play you like to see if you're an offensive coach. There's the oh, goal. heck of a play, my goodness. Number 53. Sims, isn't That's it? Walter Sims. Ooh. We haven't heard from a lot tonight. No, we really haven't heard a lot from him tonight, Rusty. Great call. But he must have been coming on some sort of a blitz, and they just timed it well. Now they might have to throw the football, huh? Third and five. Although, you know... It's fourth. It's four down territory, like you said. That's right. And they're under. They're under three minutes. Two thirty-two and counting. There we go. Third and five. Whitehurst back to pass. Play action. Rolls to his right. Dumps it off. Kuba. A nice catch by Kuba Hat before he's stuffed at the eight-yard line. Oh and that's man. That's height does mean. He's a oh. big kid. Kuba Hat bounces back from that injury. And a great throw by Todd Whitehurst, who had a little pressure. Kind of cocked, kind of didn't know whether he 
should let that ball go and decided just let it go after it was the second man out. Woo. Nice Woo. catch. Fully Woo. extended way up there in the air. Two hands on the ball. Great nice catch. Grab. Good Great catch. They're on the eight. First and goal on the eight. North Correct. Monterey County on the march. 209 and County. 14-14 tie. Trying to break the stalemate here in the CCS Championship. Camino Calderon oh. in motion, but Brian Jackson's given the ball and met by Walter Sims. Sims. Nice job, Russie, because he was right there. I'll tell you, he stuffed it. That line, he's played, now he's starting to play well. We Maybe, we just haven't called his name very well. He's probably played well all night long, but he's, that's two key plays back-to-back -back almost, where he just stuffed the ball carrier. They're going to have to throw the ball in. I'd go back to Hatton again. I mean, he's tall and he's... We'll see if they go to the corner of the end zone. Val Tierra, the tight end, number 45, lines up strong right. Back to pass. Looks over the middle. It's oh, it's picked off. That's by Astro. He's across the 15 to the 20. Slips and falls before Hurd puts the tackle on him. But my goodness, talk about a big interception whoa, with 120 whoa, left in the whoa. game. Unbelievable. And the Palma people are smelling tie right now. And I'm not so sure that Norm Cost is going to take the ball and throw it up in the air with a minute 20 on the clock, knowing that he has literally at this point broken the string. So, you know, it's a break here at 24. So, woo, woo, woo. Ryan Maestri, the senior quarterback, quarterback, punter. He's had a whale of a game. He's been down. He's been up. He comes up with the biggest play of the game. And he was, wait, he was waiting back there, Rusty. And that guy, you know, I don't know what's going through his brains, but I bet he was back there going, go ahead, throw it. I'm going to pick this thing. Let's see what he does now. All right, here we go. Less than a minute to go in this game. 14 to 14 tie. He's back to pass. It looks like the oh. hook and ladder wide open, but no, just tipped away. Not wide open, but a step on Kuma Hatton. Yeah, and Kuma Hatton and Valtierra both had looked like they, I mean, not Valtierra, but Calderon, both looked like they had a chance at catching the ball, and, I, and someone touched it. It was not a Palma kid. It was a, it was a North Monterey High kid. There. Calderon, Calderon must have gotten his hands on it a little bit and knocked it loose, and then Kuma, that, Kuma may have had the pick on that. And that's that wheel pattern that they've run every time they've had to go deep. That's what they've run. It may take some courage, but I'd go over the middle. That's the only place you I can gotta have to talk to you about what happens. They're gonna keep it a tie. I think tie. they do. I don't think there's a California tiebreaker on this. All right, here I we agree. go. Second and ten. They give up the middle. Gildersleeve. Back Gildersleeve weaves his way for about six, maybe seven yards. Forty-two seconds and county down to forty in the game. And it looks like we're going to have ourselves a tie championship game, Franklin. Kind of looks it to me. I think Monterey just called timeout. North Monterey called timeout. Now the clock's still ticking. 28 seconds to go. They're it's letting like it go. A little bit of confusion out there on Palma's part. North Monterey may think about using their timeout. I they got to get a playoff here. Referees watching they this watch. They stack the offense. They're just going to go back and sit on it. Give up the middle, but just a Gildersleeve. He's working hard as if they got the first down. Not four seconds. They're going to stop the clock at four seconds with the first down. Folks, boy, oh boy. it looks like a tight football game. It looks like uh, Palma's going to be uh, uh, content. Well, they're going to try one more play. See, that was my feeling too. You know, Casa. You know, I, I'm sure it went through his mind. He says, "By golly, I'm not going to lose this game." You know. We, uh, you know, he said, I'm not going to lose this game. We we're, we're, we're may not win it, but I'm not going to lose it. We're facing a team that's won 24 straights, ranked number one in the state. He's saying, maybe I should be there, too. So they end up being 11-0-1. North Monterey ends up being 11-0-1 as well. So. And they remain undefeated. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. Never would have thought that when two undefeated teams got together that they would stay undefeated. It reminds me of that great Notre Dame. Michigan State game, Era Parsegian against Duffy Doherty. Remember that game? And Era took so much heat because he didn't go for the win at the end of the game. Remember that? Slightly reminiscent right here, folks. Same thing. Maybe Norm Casa get a little heat. I doubt it. A lot of you high schoolers probably recall that game. And not too many of us. Duffy Doherty? Duffy Doherty. <laughs> the great, the great Irishman. He was a great coach and uh, uh, did a nice job. He was one of the first guys to really heavily recruit black athletes in the Big Ten and brought them in and really taught them. I mean, they got degrees and that kind of stuff. All right. Hats off. Four seconds to go in the game. Here we go. Maestri back to pass. Last play of the game. They're going to go for it all. Throw it downfield. Batted away as the clock 
ticks down to zero. We've got ourselves a 14 to 14 tie. And folks, it looks like that's the way it's gonna stay in the Central Coast Section Championship game. And it was an absolutely fantastic super football game. And I don't think either team deserved to lose or win on this night. I mean, Palma played them off their heels, folks. I mean, you know, North Monterey people may not want to hear that, but North Monterey played very, very well, and as well, and so did Palma. What a great football game. Well, I, I found out how good Palma was. You know, I, I knew that they were undefeated, but I had sort of gotten this impression that, you know, maybe it, it was a little overrated, their undefeated record. But, you know, as well as they played against Aptos, that offense scored 20 points in that quagmire yes. of last week. Yes. I knew they were tough, but they really played great tonight. I think they were. I think they played outstanding football, and it's a tribute to Norm and his staff over there, and and uh, Angelo and all those guys who worked so darn hard to make this a successful season for them. And again, North Monterey, uh, they may have ended up with a tie, but they're the champions, folks. I mean, you know, they haven't lost it or anything. They're yep. the co-champs here in the CCS in this division. It was a hell, of, a heck of a high school football <laughs> game. Coach Larry Susan, the North Monterey County Condors. Remain 11-0-1, still undefeated, and, well, they share a tie for their third consecutive Central Coast section tri title. They were trying for that tri-tip, they called it. The Lakers called it a three-peat. They liked the tri-tip, and they got they got one rib out of it, well, a couple ribs. There's um, some unhappy football players down there for uh, North Monterey, but a trivia to North Monterey. You know, Todd Whitehurst had, in my opinion, just an unbelievably super game except for the last pick he threw. Uh, Mike Bro played played wonderfully. Valtiera, the tight end, played great. Calderon, Jackson, Kuma Hatton. I mean, there's some great players down there um, that just didn't get a chance to win a championship or a division, excuse me, a CCS championship. All right, well, I'll, I'll try and stop trying to join that overtime chant that the fans of North Monterey County are chanting down there and I guess we're going to have to bid adieu for this championship game, and it's quite a shame. It's been a blast, Frank, and it's been, like you said, a heck of a game. I'm sorry to see it end. I, uh, it could have gone on forever. It's too bad they didn't have the California tiebreaker this time. The game of the week, of course, will return now that football is over with basketball in our winter season, and we're going to kick it off with the big one, Santa Cruz Cardinals against the Aptos Mariners. Woo. The return of Bill Warmerdam and Pete Newell and Jeff Conley and I will bring you that game, which I'm really cranked up for, and that'll be played, as Jeff Conley calls it, the oven, and, and you know, over there at Aptos High School. It'll be about 88 in the gym. That's right, and so that ought to be a blast. And that'll <laughs> be the first weekend. The game's played on a Friday night, January 5th. We'll air January 7th and 8th, so stay tuned for our basketball season. We'll have some girls basketball, some soccer as well this winter, so, so looking forward to that season. But... The football has come to an end, and Frank Lynch, I want to thank you very much for all the thank you, Rusty. expert you help you, it was fun. you it was provided fun myself you. and Jeff Conley during the year and another fine hey. job. And I guess we'll see you in the track season. Yes, track season I'm looking forward to. I'd like to thank KRUZ and the guys out there on the cameras, and I don't know all their names, but they've done a heck of a job, and their hands are frozen, and uh, they, have, they have done some filming in some pretty horrendous conditions this year, and my hat off to you. Uh, and that crew, and Jeffrey Charon, our producer in the studio. I could reel off a few. We've got Mark Ligon, Damon Meyer, Ron Losey, and Chuck Saltzman are the cameramen, and pretty much the same crew that did that rain game of oh, last man. week, which I still, hats off to those guys. Uh, Anga Feller was one of our production assistants tonight, along with Chip Shewer, and during the whole year, we just thank everybody for all the help, and to you too, Jeffrey Charon, our producer, director, and the Chuck. Brian Ross, our technical director. Chuck Saltzman did some technician work this this year. So we're going to come to an end, do another football season. Paula Mahoney, yet another name that comes out, another one who helps. And Becca it. King, of course. Becca yeah. King in the truck on several occasions, helping out the director in there on audio and video and all the different things that happen in the truck. So as we see in the middle of the field, North Monterey County and Palma shaking hands and trading plaques and trophies and co-champions, Central Coast Section, Division Two South. Well, I'm sad to see it come to an end tonight as uh, I'm sure the North Monterey people and the Palm people got to be very proud of their teams. They played exceptionally well. It was a great game, Rusty. It was a great football season, probably the most competitive we've ever had in the SECIL and going down the route here for the division championship. So it's great.
great game. So that'll do it for our fall season on KRUZ Sports. We hope you all, from all of us here at KRUZ, have a very wonderful holiday season. And until the first weekend in January, so long. We thank you all for watching and listening. Good night, everybody.